What if you were the producer and you just had a bunch of lettuce? Oh, I was going to say, I, I thought I, I thought that just means I was really good at taking shits. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> residents, to the Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard, and across from me is the doctor himself. Ha-ha! <laughs> Each week, we talk about the weird and wonderful world of DC while fielding questions from listeners like you. You're welcome. <laughs> you know that you've gotten... Well, of course you do, because you've yeah. been communicating with my wife when I'm not around. Uh, and sometimes when you are. Yeah, it's and okay. telling her to play that fucking song. Yeah. And she does it in the mornings, usually on the weekends. Yeah. Well, do you know what's great about that, though, is that that's not usually what I tell her to do. It. No, no, no. She waits. She for... she's better at picking the moment. Oh, yeah. This is a good partnership, I think. I don't I don't like this at all. <laughs> uh, speaking of things I do like, though, we got a review. Yay. Yay. On Canadian. Is that it? Did we do it? We did. We made it. This is 30. Holy fuck. I know. We no, did it. it. Right. Be- we did it just before iTunes was abolished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so long reviews. No, I think they're going to transfer Everyone over. that's written an iTunes review. Go to the new go to platform. Facebook, go to Stitcher. No, they're getting a new music platform. They're just getting oh, a new okay. podcast platform. And I'm pretty sure that the metadata is going to get transferred over. They're not stupid enough. <laughs> just get rid of it and bring in a new thing. Do you know what? <laughs> Play it safe. Review us somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's just, like we said, bathrooms. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, if if the if your car is dirty, just like wipe someone it, else's car is dirty, wipe it into the windscreen. Yeah, um, do it on random cars <laughs> in, that you pass. It's like it's the rainy season in a lot of places. I'm sure there'll be some grimy, like dirty windows that you can yeah. write on. Do yeah. it there, uh, but that's not what this person did. They did it on Canadian iTunes. That's good enough. Yeah, it's 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 the step up from a dirty car. Yeah, what a dirty car? <laughs> Canadian iTunes. All the other platforms <laughs> and then American iTunes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, on Canadian iTunes, we got a five star review from Axel H ninety. <gasps> Axel. Axel. Uh, who they they go on to say, uh, long time coming to rate this podcast. After all the begging in brackets. <laughs> it worked. Oh, see, like I said, desperation is the way to get everything you want. Yeah, I mean, you a lot of what a lot of the good that you have in your life, I think, is owed to begging. Yeah, yeah, being desperate and <laughs> looking pathetic, my wife included. I won, I won you over. I whittled you down. Yeah, I don't know. That's the same as won you over. That's <laughs> yeah by by making her feel bad. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the way that most people. You're definitely do. the winner in that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> hey, I mean, you should you should know. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, continues to say this podcast is awesome I've been listening from day one and have listened to many episodes more than once wow Axel uh, which is funny because now I know that he's Canadian I know we I, we gotta keep calling him Ixel 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 that's actually yeah that's yeah okay uh, boo, boo, boo. after listening and trying to find the right DC Comics podcast I finally found this one and it's exactly what you need if you love DC the doctor knows what he's talking about and it, uh, it's not too in your face arrogance as many others are it's still arrogance but well you know it's not too in your face it's more of like be unreasonable it's on your neck and chest more than anything I know more than most people <laughs> I am better than you. I just don't need to talk about it. Um, the doctor. No. Yeah. Missouri. Uh, producer Richard also can hold his own uh, when having general conversations about DC comics. Uh, like Batman's a character. Um, honestly, just sounds like two friends talking. Well, friends is a strong word. Glad um, it sounds that way. Yeah. Yeah. It worked. The lie. Uh, debating about the theme of the week. And that's awesome. Now it's just the two of them. And there's a lot more funnier back and forth. <laughs> Good thing they got rid of Colin. Uh, I mean, it was an accident out of the doctor and Richard's control. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah obviously. Why would you, I don't even know why you would have to say that out loud. Like, I don't even. It's weird to say it because it almost implies that something nefarious or deliberate or some sort of like 
carefully constructed plan was executed. Like, do you know how have involved, you know, breaking into a Zeppelin storage yard late at night? Do you know how months, uh, how much months of work would have to go into something like that? Carefully finding babysitters and then meeting at like time the guard shift changes. Yeah. uh, Hypothetically. I mean, you you can read it all in my book. If I did it, here's how I would have done it. (laughs) If I blew up, call it in that Zeppelin. Yeah. Uh, Goes on to say, honestly, if you're looking for DC conversations every week, this is the only podcast to listen to, hands down. Hell yes. Fuck you, all the other podcasts. Uh, Also, (laughs) check out their Patreon. Well worth a listen for all kinds of general geek topics. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. And most importantly, thank you for doing this podcast week in, week out. We all love it. Also, buy their merch. (gasps) Buy our merch. So many great little shouts Oh, yeah. Thank you, Axel. Ixel. And you did it. You got us there. We've been edging for months, but now we're there. Axel got us there. We have arrived. I, I wanted I wanted him for so long and he finally got me there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Axel. <laughs> we can do it together. But what this means is now that- to help me no no hey. I'm a, I'm a giving lover. I'll I'll help <laughs> Axel get there now. <laughs> yeah. I reciprocate. Yeah, now we're gonna help get you to our video episode yes i mean you're not in it but no 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 but i just mean like you'll get to watch it yeah i mean i mean i'm not that giving him a letter <laughs> <laughs> i need to specifically be benefiting <laughs> <laughs> oh yes but there's no news there but there is news there definitely online. is news. i just looked over at your wife and she seems unfazed yeah no by this revelation <laughs> if anything she's asleep now <laughs> Uh, let's go on to the news. It's a thing that you can do. Uh, we finally got some concrete information about the Batman. We've got an actor. We've got a confirmation of a trilogy. Well, I don't know that it was conf- Oh my god. A lot is happening. What is happening? I- Somehow- Game of Thrones? It is. Somehow Game of Thrones- and a phone call came through. I don't, the phone call, I think, launched the, the Game of Thrones. <laughs> wow, I don't even know how that happened. Weird. We got a comment like on Twitter this week about how well-produced the show was. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Wow, that's a thing. That, that phone happen. call is coming, am I right? <laughs> And so am I. Thanks, Axel. Game of Thrones joke. Yep. Uh, But yeah, we did. Uh, Matt Reeves confirmed that it was a trilogy. Oh, well, hot damn. Yeah. We got confirmation that uh, that it's a trilogy and that sparkly vampire Robert Pattinson is our Bruce Wayne Batman. He's our Bruce Wayne Batman. Uh, There's a this is uh, there's a rumor. So not something confirmed that Robin may appear in the movie. There's I mean, there's which would be dope. I think I'm done with just like Batman on his own movies we've had had a lot of that i think it's time to try him again i think they've been everybody steered away from him for a long time because it felt too hokey and campy and i think they're now somebody's willing to try to make it serious and give it homage and uh matt reeves talked a lot about sort of his dedication again to the noir film style Mm -hmm. which i mean he's doubling down onto it with every sort of interview which means i think that it's a good chance that we're going to get a serious noir film and like like, a a detective yeah which i'm super interested which feels more like a harkening back they'll call oh no the movie's called the batman never mind i was gonna say they should just call it like detective like the world's greatest detective or something like that detective batman yeah detective batman (gasps) detective batachu peak batchu (laughs) dc execs I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, you know. um, but no, it was really interesting. He basically was quoted in saying it's very much uh, a point of view, dr- uh, uh, a driven noir Batman tale. Uh, it's told very squarely um, on his shoulders. And I hope it's going to be a story that will be thrilling, but also emotional. It's more Batman in his detective mode than we've seen in films. The comic have a history of that. Uh, he's supposed to be the world's greatest detective and not necessarily been a part of what the movies have been saying so far. Um, I'd love for this one. Uh, I'd love this one to be uh, where we go on a journey of tracking down criminals and trying to solve crime. Uh, it's going to allow the characters to have an arc uh, so that he can go through a transformation. Nice. Which is awesome. That sounds, I dig it. Yeah. It's saying all the right things. Um, 
how do you feel about the 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 Robert Pattinson confirmation? I mean, we've talked a little bit about it. Already. I I see it, man. Yeah, like, I kind of do too, especially for this sort of thing. I think he fits in sort of that sort of nostalgia yeah. nostalgia sort of fifties detective-y and, sort of well, and feeling. I, and, and I said it before, like he's not who I would have picked, but I also was one of the assholes that was like the gay cowboy when they announced Heath Ledger for the oh. Joker. So like, what the fuck do I know? You know, like it's true, but Robert Pattinson has, you know, other than twilight has generally been pretty selective about his projects. You know, it's true. Picks these sort of things that are maybe more dramatic or have some more Serious, characters. Like esoteric he, he stuff. He is yeah. like, a, he, he's an actor that wants to, Act. Put more in, yeah. He wants to actually act. He wants to put more into it than he's, just like appearing on screen. He takes right? some bad stuff for money, I'm assuming. But I, I, I mean, most actors do one for them, one for like good themselves, luck. Good right? luck so. finding an actor with no duds, right? Exactly. Their, you know, yeah. Like, Can't. Uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm in for it. I think he'll yeah. do really well. Uh, the one thing that frustrated me though was online. I can't remember who it was, but somebody was trying to like sell people on the idea by showing a, a photo of the. Jim Lee, Bruce Wayne, and I'm like, that's not how you sell me on that. <laughs> well, no, that's also not the one I would use. I think, yeah, of all of the right, I just yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not into it, but I, uh, yeah, I, I'm I looking forward you, to I it. I thought you liked Jim Lee. I can't. You've gone from being like ambivalent to like outright hatred with that one. Though, yeah, right? well, the more I've seen from him, the more that I don't like him. Right. So fair enough. Show me less of him, and maybe I'll. Or show me somebody else I don't like more. I don't know. <laughs> There's ways to... It's a very complicated setup. Uh, well, we got some inf- more Titans uh, Season 2 information. We finally got the casting. We knew that we were getting this character, but now we have the casting for them, Aqualad. Oh, fuck. Who is it? Uh, I didn't see this. Really? I'm really... I'm blowing your mind today. This is kind of nice. Which Aqualad? Garth or... Uh... Or, Garth. Uh, yes. Calderon. We are getting Garth. Yo, that's dope as hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it basically says fans of Calderon, uh, the Aqualad from Justice, might, might be disappointed to learn that Titans is going to be the original uh, uh, Garth. Yo, that's dope as hell, though. Right? Uh, this guy's not a huge actor. Uh, his name's uh, Drew Van, Act- Van Acker. <laughs> his name is Drew Van Acker. <laughs> <laughs> What's what's your name? Uh, R- He's Purdue. just two kids in a trench coat that walked into WB. Was like, well, we can audition. <laughs> I mean, I can audition. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what uh, he's been. Oh, so he's been in a lot of like, like he was in the Pretty Little Liars show. Okay, uh, he was on this something called Devious Maids, uh, 2017's Training Day show. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, not a huge actor, but I think that like I mean you can see here. I, th- I think he fits the sort oh, of yeah. look. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yo, that's dope. Nice. I mean, season two is gonna have so much stuff in there. It's gonna have like my wife's my wife's checking about. It. Do you approve? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's yeah. a that's uh, okay I, symbol from. Yeah, I would say that was seven Jessica. out of ten thirsts. Um. Yeah, <laughs> that was like I'm not parched, but I could uh, I'd take a drop. <laughs> I could have a drink. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, 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 yeah. yeah. I could have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting so much in this season though, because we're also going to get Connell, Superboy, mm-hmm. Crypto was in that like yeah. Post credit scene, we're getting Deathstroke, Ravager, Jericho. We're obviously going to get more Trigon. They're like, you know, we did like, the first season you, and this like quiet little road trip. And now it's like game yeah, on. Now it's like we know superheroes are out there because they're in this world. They talk about Batman. Like, mm-hmm. Batman is known because Beast Boy says, like, "Holy fuck, you're Robin." We know in Doom Patrol, the Cyborg wants to join the Justice yep. League. Like all the like that world is out there, so it's kind of cool now that we're <laughs> they're just like, you know what? It's happening. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean. Hopefully it's the right choice. Hopefully it's yeah. not too much. They can handle it. They did such a good job. I'm going to give them a like a pass to see yeah. how it goes. And hopefully, and I mean, we're almost certainly going to get more Donna Troy. You know, definitely. Like, I she, mean, she's, she's kind of in there. But she's been doing a bunch of uh, like uh, combat training recently. Yeah, so that, I'm yeah. I'm curious to see like maybe this is a more physical like physical season where we're actually getting some fight. Kind of so. hope that at some point this season, like everyone manages to come to gather. Like we got Hawk and Dove back in the mix. Yeah, because you know they're kind of in and out in the first season so be neat to get like an actual team to, yeah to, yeah you I know bet. still have the four as like the core of it but it'd be pretty dope, yeah i mean t titans is expands and, and contracts you know like yeah. why not I'm, I'm up for it i'm looking forward to it i think it's gonna be really good yeah me too uh well batman author tom king 
to co-write New Gods movie with Ava DuVernay. Yes. Uh, it's a weird headline to call him Batman author in that context. Because he's the guy that wrote Mr. Miracle. Right? But. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes, he's currently writing Batman. Um, but yeah, Tom King was the guy behind uh, Mr. Miracle uh, with uh, Mitch Garads on art. Um, but We're, Tom King has been hired to co-write, yeah, the New Gods movie with Ava DuVernay. So, I mean, I think that A says they're going to be drawing a lot on... Miracle Man? On Mr. Miracle, yeah. Mr. Miracle, sorry, yeah. Um, and I think it also means that they sort of trust his interpretation of the maybe the relationships in the New Gods. Like, the New Gods is such, like, a big, vast corner of things. There's lots of different... It's like how the X-Men is in... Marvel, right? Where it can pretty much exist on its own if you want yeah, it to, because yeah. there's so many characters, so many relationships, so much of their own stories that like, then when you add them into the full Marvel, you're like, holy fuck, there's a lot of people. In there. Yeah. It's the same thing with the new gods, right? Like they're, they can be their own contained thing, especially because they're on a different world. I'd rather if they were. Yeah. But, uh, it means that, you know, I, I think they're like, we like where you went with that. There's obviously more characters in this, but you know, if also if they're anchoring the movie around, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, maybe that, that relationship, then it would make sense to bring him in. And it's nice to see a superhero movie written by a comic book writer. Well, yeah, I think that matchup is good too, right? Like Ava, Ava DuVernay, I think, will, will she's a good enough filmmaker that you don't go too far the other way, right? Yeah. You know, when it's just like you put Jeff Johns in a room and he's like, here's all the great shit I made in the comics. Yeah. And you put it in a movie and you're like, this is a fucking garbage fire. No, like, yeah. Too much stuff. Why are we doing parallax already? Like, <laughs> um, yeah. But maybe having her in there because she's such an accomplished filmmaker, she could be like, great, I see where you're going. This, is, like, this isn't going to work film-wise. Blah, 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 blah. And they can work together. Someone with yeah, yeah, a yeah. really intimate knowledge of the characters and then someone with a really intimate knowledge of how to translate that story to screen. And then, yeah, I I feel really good about it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, female directors, comic book writers, the, the, a lot of the right stuff's going into this. Yeah. And, I mean, if you're pulling from Mr. Miracle's current run, I mean, pff, I mean, jeez. Yeah, that's a great fucking story. That's, I mean, that's made for movies, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's not exactly that story because I know where the twists are. But uh, but e even if it's just about how the characters relate to each other, because it's that weird thing where it's like this cosmic scale battle between good and evil. But then there's also scenes where like Dark Side has a carrot, like from a yes. veggie tray. Like it's <laughs> like if it has that sort things of, that like, ground you, but like that yeah. sort of weird quirkiness or like it's almost like um like the weird like code of honor thing like. In that book, the female Furies come to the hospital when Barda is giving birth, and they like um, Bernadette hands him the Farin knife and says, "Like this can, you know, this is the only thing that can kill a god. Um, I'm going to use it to gut you one day, but you know, bring it in there just in case they have to see section or something." Like it's a thing that makes it's all like for now. And there's a truce because this is more important. Like it's, it's a weird sort of setup. Thing. It's a thing that makes a lot of the like best of Marvel movies good. I think yeah, is true. is taking these cosmic scales and then grounding them with some sort of like uh, uh, humor and yeah, some some more of like general human elements, right? So. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I think this is great. I, I'm very I'm, excited. I'm yeah. Super excited about this now. Um, we got a little bit of comic news. Uh, DC announces Joker slash Harley Criminal Insanity. Yeah, so this Criminal is, Sanity. Sorry, this I apologize. is one of those Ink titles. Yes. I think like the young adult ones, and um, I think the I, the premise or the idea is that it's like a. It's it actually, like, it doesn't look like it is. Not now that I think about it. I. Th I th think it is i'd be curious but it's um like it's meant to be like a criminal or like a psychological profile of the joker as told by harley or something like that no this is black label oh black label sorry that's what it, you're yeah. right yeah um but i think that's the idea of it yeah is that it's supposed to be from sort of harley's maybe clinical perspective on the joker um which is fine yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm into. I mean, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm maybe, I don't get quite as angry as other people online do, but I'm also in that camp of people that are like, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I don't need that many bat verse stories. But I'm also, I'll but take another time, good story, if, right? But, like, but that's the thing, right? You know, it's one thing to say, like, there's too many stories with these po characters that are popular and bankable. Yeah. But also, like, if someone just has a story to tell and that's the character, like, and they get the opportunity to do it, then, like, go for it, right? Yeah. 
You know, when people are banging down the doors with wanting metamorpho stories, then we're going to get them. But like, <laughs> you know, until then, give the people what they want, I guess. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we're getting nothing else. I understand the frustration. I get that people want to see their their favorite characters and stuff. Like, trust me, I get it before. Like before the last couple of years, being an Aquaman fan was not yes. exactly like, <laughs> you know, rolling in great content. So, you know, but I so, you're you're also used to being fans of things that generally in years past don't do fuck very you. well. You're talking about the Maple Leafs, yeah, you? yeah, of course, and the Buffalo Bills, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> do you like the Jays too? <laughs> <laughs> Toronto Raptors. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I kind of hopped off that bandwagon, but back on right now. Yeah, I know. I bet you are <laughs> back on, baby. <laughs> uh, well, the last one wasn't from this, but this next piece of news is from DC Inc. Okay. Uh, we got a Raven trailer and a first look at Batgirl, Beast Boy, and Nightwing titles. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. They announced a bunch of new titles for... This is the young adult stuff. Have you seen the uh, Ravens trailer? I did, yeah. I'm going to watch it right now because yeah. I have not seen it. Um, but, I, I, I mean, these little comic trailers are never anything super special, but they're always really fun to just see the way that they uh, sort of re-represent the uh, art. And it's still relatively aggressive marketing for these, it, like, young adult ones. So, it like, kind of reminds trying me... trying to reach an audience. The, the art style kind of reminds me of, like, modern-day Archie a little bit, I'll be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Uh, yeah, that's definitely, like, especially, like, sort of the off, like, Archie's dead stuff. and Oh, like, Afterlife? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I'm into it. I think it's really cool looking, and uh, I'm I I don't I wonder if that market is like that young adult. Like I, I'm curious to know if that is actually working. Um, I and, mean, they, and it's fit speaking to that market, and they're actually. That, I mean, they just announced like four new books. Yeah, you know, like that Mira one is already out. There's a Catwoman one. You know, like they. I, I don't think you keep making the announcements and keep putting stuff out if it's not. I think but, pulling from uh, Teen Titans, especially like Raven, I think it's it, it makes a lot of sense. I think well, as long yeah, as if you're making young adult things, you might as well pick your young adult character. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I think that that makes a ton of sense. And There's not a lot of young adult novels where the main character is not also that demographic. You know, where it's like <laughs> you're not like 16 and reading a book and be like, I can really relate to this 50 year old. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, I really like the uh, the covers though. They look really nice. The Beast Boy yeah. one's really interesting. I love that Nightwing one. Yeah, because it, it's like yeah, it's just got like it looks like an old timey circus poster. It has kind of an Art Deco sort of thing going on. I love the Batgirl one a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that one's great. Um, yeah, that old timey circus. It's almost the like, Beast Boy one's pretty cool too. I, they're all cool, but uh, I yeah, I think I definitely love the uh, the Lost Carnival Dick Grayson graphic yeah. novel. That's uh, it's super like uh like 50s or six like yeah it's really really nice and i and i loved the gotham high that just sounds like a fun yeah but is it just me or does like is that kind of does that kind of look like uh uh smallville clark in the face a little bit i mean i maybe inadvertently i don't think it's like i don't think so either but it is it does kind of look like him what if it was like you know like those birthday cards that play a song when you open them what if you open the book somebody (laughs) say I wish my wife's laughing at us because we're dorks. Uh, I mean, she should know that by now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. We're celebrating two years next week. Oh my god! Yeah, Jesus Christ! Yeah. And we've been doing the podcast all along. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of trailers, uh, not a DC, but Vertigo's The Kitchen yeah. trailer was released. Uh, have you watched that yet? Yeah, it looks dope as hell. This is the one where it's set in Hell's Kitchen, and it's like the wives of like the I think it's the Irish mob or something yeah. like that they end up taking over the mob because uh, the husbands are either like dead or in prison or something like that. It's one of the least like comic booky comic book stories. Well, I but... mean, it's, it's Vertigo, right? Yeah. So it's not capes and tights, but it's yeah, it's like a cool premise and stuff like that. I, I'm looking forward to that. And you get is it Melissa McCarthy's in that? She yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, She's she's all, like even in bad movies she's always a good part of them yeah. right so I, I'm looking forward to seeing. I think that. It, I think it looks dope. Yeah, I think that's a movie that maybe needs a bit of like a bit of love, a bit of word of mouth sort of push because we haven't seen very much about it. I, at I all. was surprised to know that it was already like uh, uh like about to come out. So yeah, I mean if you're if you're into DC Vertigo, if you've read The Kitchen, or if you even just like think you might be into that premise, like go check it out, support it because uh, it would be cool to see more of those kind of stories being told too. 
other other comic book adaptations that aren't just superheroes, right? Like I think that would be that would be cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the last piece of news: a uh, little bit of TV, a little bit of comics here. <gasps> uh, Krypton gets a digital mini comic ahead of season two. I'm so excited for season two. Did you see the comic? I haven't seen the comic yet. Did you finish watching Krypton or no? No. I f- I just like. I just went through the whole season again. You uh, season one through the end. It's so good. Really? It's so good. I I love Krypton. Say, sell me on it. Um, because I stopped after like the second or third episode. It's not especially superhero-y. It's very like it's like a sci-fi political drama. Yeah, it's kind of like it's. I won't. I won't go so far as to say it's Game of Thrones because it's not. But no. there's elements of that about like you know who's planning a coup against whom. You know who, where do the loyalties lie? And it's constantly shifting, right? Like even when you think you know, even a character you know, and you think you get it, it always there's always some sort of subversion of it. But it does paint like a very interesting and like relevant picture of. Like a declining society, a society that's like heading towards doom. destruction. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not only that, but it's more tied to Superman than you would think from being so like generally yeah. generationally removed, but not Gotham. It's not Gotham. Like it's not it. it it's the things where they bring stuff in from that's comic booky feels to me more natural than Gotham ever did. It's very it's like also having organic. Adam Strange probably helps. Adam Strange is in there. I mean, time travel is already in there, so they're like, who we knows? Can, who knows what can happen? Yeah, here. there's like really really cool shit in there, and I got like the art direction and the costume makeup stuff. Like, who would have thought they could pull off Brainiac? Like, yeah, green, green and purple and wires and like and make it look and like, make it look fucking scary and like dope as hell like wow man, it's it's really really good all right i'll try i i, I honestly will but i just was like and, and some great actors in it yeah but yeah so I, I don't know much about these comics i haven't been able to find where they are but so it's it's like setting up like what's happened the between, basically between the two seasons right, yeah, right, yeah yeah exactly so well, i guess i'm gonna have to get on that yeah i i i, I don't know maybe it's here but I uh, yeah, I'm curious. I, I, I like when they kind of do that stuff. I like. I wish they did that honestly with more. Right. Uh, it would be nice to just like get some backstory and a little bit extra information. They, I mean, they were doing that for a bit with Arrow and Flash. They were doing uh, like comics that bridge the gap between seasons. Uh, after Smallville was done, they put out a comic that was called like Smallville Season Eleven, where they just kept yes. telling Smallville stories where he was Superman. And like those were pretty neat. Um, I think they might be doing it with Gotham. I thought really? I read something like that. Maybe I'm making that one up, but I thought I read something like that. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, a lot of like comic book sort of focused shows end up becoming comics. Uh, and again, for a little it's, bit. It's, it's Batman. There's like a, a never ending pit of like. <laughs> you know, like what people are willing to buy for Batman. I guess so. that's true. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Um, well, on to this week's theme. <gasps> Fight night. Round two. Ding, ding. It's week one of Fanagar. Our fight. <laughs> bing, bing. Round two. Yeah. It's that's right. Fanagar has begun. Yeah. It's our like f- our fun like fan service month. Uh, Doesn't go on to Patreon. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You gotta wait till next year for that. Yeah, we, yeah, where we plan it better. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't think about that until yeah, just now. Yeah, we're gonna plan it better. Yeah, we're yeah. Plan it. How good are we gonna plan it? You're gonna, you're gonna watch us plan we're it. Gonna we're gonna plan it so good. We're gonna plan it together. But last year we did a fight night episode. Yes, that, that's the thing that we sort of steered away. F- we generally steer away from, which is just like who would win a fight type questions. Yes, we don't really do that. No, but it is fun to do. It is, yeah. So we did. That. It's a thing that we did as kids, I think, a little bit, right? Totally. So. I mean, it's technically a thing I do as an adult. I just don't do it so much on the podcast. Yeah, but you, online, I'm constantly weighing in on like who would win in a fight. It's usually, you and your father. Yeah, yeah. And now I would win. You hear me, old man? <laughs> He's going to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please don't. Papa. No. Papa, Papa no. Uh, <laughs> Cats in the <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
But last year we had people submit like fight matchups. Yeah. Who, like who this you, person versus who you this want us person. To talk about. And and we went through them though. There were a ton of fun ones. Yeah. Uh, but this year we thought we'd switch it up a little bit. We said just submit a fighter and we will randomly select the matchups. So we don't get like time to prep arguments or anything like that. We're just gonna pick uh fighters and decide who would win. So we got a lot. We got like over 30 fighters. Yeah, it's kind of insane. So we've we've put them all inside of my tar- a, my Tardis cookie jar. Yeah, a different doctor. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Sorry, doctor. Let's take this again. Doctor who? Let's take it again. <laughs> so we put this inside a, a, the doctor. <laughs> nope. Take it again. Oh, yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, there's a there's a we put it inside this the doctor my, box. My wife's box. No, wait, no. Let's do this again. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, We've got a TARDIS, like, not uh, cookie jar, but basically a cookie jar. Yes. That Who put the fighters in the cookie jar? Not me. You did, baby. You did. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Who put the fighters in the fighter box? Let's <laughs> crash that dummy. Wow. I was, I was doing a different thing. And do, you, do you remember that song? No. Who put the kid in the kid house? You oh. did, baby. You did. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Fucking coffee spoons, whatever. Um, so we put them all inside of the TARDIS. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, uh, I know it doesn't look like it can fit them all, but it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> Great joke. You didn't telegraph it at all. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna put our hand in. We're gonna go back and forth. <laughs> gonna stick my fist in there and pull something out. Jesus Christ. So let's see what our first fighter is. All right, first fighter is a classic Superman. Just super, just plain Holy old Superman, shit. right out of the gate, right out the of the man gate. of steel and himself. Who, so who's who's going up against him? I hope it's someone with no powers. <laughs> uh, against another man, Starman. Oh, Jack Knight. Interesting. All right. Jack Knight Starman. Now, you know Superman. Do you know I don't Starman? know Starman, no. So, the Jack Knight Starman. Starman waiting in the sky. That's the one. Yeah. Um, He'd like to come and meet Jack us. Knight's father was the original Starman, like a Justice Society like member. Knight. <laughs> a Golden Age hero who was Ted Knight, the Starman, who had a thing that was originally called the Gravity Rod and then it became called the Cosmic Rod. I know about that. It was basically... I didn't think I got the character, the names out of the box. <laughs> that's what you give to Cosmic DM. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah! Uh, <laughs> oh, you're going to get it now. Give the old Cosmic Rod. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. You set um, him up. But basically it uh, would like take in energy from the cosmos, from stars. And he, from it, would, stars. it would allow him to fly. He could shoot energy, um, different things like that. So then when Jack Knight, Jack Knight didn't want to be Starman. His older brother, David, became Starman and then was killed. But then Jack Knight sort of falls into it, like has to become Starman. But he loses the the cosmic rod and he has to use like an earlier version that was this big staff um and so it has many of those same properties it can take energy from uh like stars and from the cosmos he can fly he can shoot energy he can you know like the staff itself is good as a weapon um he himself has no powers he has to have the staff this is interesting so starman versus superman so what do you think? My first inclination is that does he does he take the power away from it? Because if technically if he pulled the the power out of the sun, oh, I see what you're saying. I mean, I don't know that it's quite that literal, but if it's a comic book, you I think you could maybe make the argument that he could draw some sort of cosmic. If he Solar. pulled the energy out of there, because I mean, if he shot him with it, it wouldn't do anything. It would make him stronger than he get his ass kicked. But if he just pulled oh. the energy out and then just kicked the shit out of him, technically that could work. That's that's interesting. I think I think even in that circumstance, you don't fully depower Superman, but maybe you bring him down to a level where he can't just like punch you into oblivion. But the problem is, 
he can't use the rod against him because it's powered by the sun and that's a thing that would just strengthen him. He couldn't him. use the energy and yeah. maybe he could just like rod him. <laughs> just yeah, give him the rod. Yeah. The cosmic rod. Yeah, 12 inches of rod right just for Superman. Jesus. That's an interesting uh, premise. I think you can reasonably do that in a comic book. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I was just going to give it to Superman because... Well, I made it a little more interesting there, yeah, Pops. Jack's not exactly, like, a very practiced hero. Like, I think all it takes is, like, just heat the rod up a little bit with your heat like, vision. Ow, and, ow, like, ow, ow, ow. and he would just drop it for a second, and then you, like, fly him into the moon or whatever yeah. you do. Like, <laughs> Realistically, Superman kind of always wins, but this is a way that, that might be I able think, to. I think that's pretty interesting. I like that. All I right. like that. Richard gave it to Starman. <laughs> I'm going to he give gave, it to Cosmic DM next. He gave it to him. Yeah. All right. He's uh, The doctor's got my wife's box in his hands. He's opening it up. She's putting a, his fist she's inside. A, she's never ignored you more. <laughs> uh, I think you're quite wrong. First one. Another classic. Yeah. Batman. Batman. The Dark Knight himself. Wow. Holy shit. Versus. Uh, versus. Versus. Ooh, Kingdom Come, Captain Marvel. Whoa. <coughs> AKA William Batson of Earth 22. So what do you think? Well, this this to me is a much closer, even though like Batman has no powers, it's a much closer one than the Starman Superman one to me. Yeah. <coughs> well, I mean, because Captain because, Marvel in general, yeah. Well, but it's Batman. Oh, yeah. He's always prepared. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we can't not consider that. Yeah. That's true. So, a little background on just the the Billy of, or William, of Earth-22 um, basically stops being Shazam for a period of time. Stops mm-hmm. being Captain Marvel. Yep. And uh, gets a little bit manipulated slash kind of brainwashed by Luthor. Um, and almost when he does become Captain Marvel again, he almost inadvertently like, well, he kind of almost starts a war, um, cause he's sort of fighting on the wrong side between these different factions of like older generation heroes and then these younger heroes that like kill people and yeah. stuff like that. Um, but he's, there's a couple of things that like, he's faster than Superman in that book. Well, really? Yeah. He beats Superman to like a nuke. And like, and stops it, like detonates it in the sky and sacrifices himself. But he's faster than Superman when he does that. Uh, there's, you know, he, there's, he goes toe to toe and I'd say wins out of the two. I'd say wow. he's probably more powerful on that earth than Shazam is on prime earth or more powerful probably than even Captain Marvel on earth five, which I mean, on the Captain Marvel earth, that, uh, th- I think, it, it, I think that's might- giving Superman a run for his money too. Then. So yeah, now Batman is very smart. I mean, Superman does manage to like outmaneuver Captain Marvel a little bit. You know, he Captain Marvel's calling down lightning and hitting Superman with it, but Superman manages to make it hit William, you know, yeah. make him hit Billy. Like he's not impervious or anything like that, but he's extremely powerful. I am tempted to say that because it's magic based. Batman might not have as much up his sleeve as he would with Superman. Superman is science, right? So you can like recreate red sun energy. You can have kryptonite or you can, you know, like there's that's ways to beat Superman. But that's what you could do with yeah. Superman. Cause he's like a sciencey power, but with magic, Batman doesn't really have magic in his arsenal. It's not no. like, it's like I made a pellet that is magic. No, <laughs> like, no. Or like an anti-magic ray or something. Exactly. Yeah. Like maybe he could have some nth metal something because that sort of disrupts magic. But even at that, I think Captain Marvel's kind of got the edge there. Definitely. I think I'm giving it to Kingdom Come Captain Marvel. Wow. I, I think he's too fast, too powerful. Too furious. And too furious, certainly. <laughs> um, but I think also there's, Batman just doesn't have enough contingencies. That being said, I think he would capital If as something happened in the fight and he got turned back into William... Batman would capitalize more than Superman. Well, I, like I mean, I, Batman, he might rumple Stiltskin or something like that and get him to say his own name. And I don't know how you can convince him to say Shazam. Like, like Billy does have his power. It works. It's just like, what's that Shaquille O'Neal movie? <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, hey there, Alakazam. He's like, my name's Shazam. <laughs> it's not though. It's Captain Marvel. Oh well, yeah, he has to say Shazam though. Yeah, yeah. I don't. What's yeah. the thing you say? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'm nuts. You got me. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is, well, I mean, this is, that's not really the context of the fight, but I think Batman would need to have some sort of magic implement given to him or he would have. He needs, I feel like he would find a way. He needs Wonder Woman's lasso. He needs, yeah. you know, like, I don't know, some artifact or some thing yeah. to be able to counter it. Some body save. Oh, so oh, Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> two different directions yeah. there. God, I, yeah, I'm on the same page anymore. I'm giving it to Kingdom Come, Captain Marvel. Yeah. What about you? When you give it to him, it comes. Kingdoms. Um, I would say Batman. You're saying Batman? Yeah. And why's that? I, I just think that he would find a way. He would make. He has connect, enough connections with super with like magic it's just, people. It's just too determined. Yeah. Too smart. Too rich. Yeah. To not win. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's fair. It's capitalism, baby. Yeah, you're always supporting the one percent. Goddamn right. As being one of them. Yeah. Well, yeah. He live like it. <laughs> I mean, you see Thanos, right? <laughs> oh. All right. Let's choose a new one. All right. Who's the first fighter? First fighter is Red Lantern Supergirl. Ooh. We're getting some real heavy hitters yeah. off the get-go, eh? Ver- versus, versus Lucifer Morningstar. Oh, shit. Satan himself. What an interesting combo. Well, okay. Well, let's uh, go over it. Yeah. we we'll talk a little bit about Red Lantern Supergirl. Sure. So in the New 52, there's an arc called Red Daughter of Krypton. Yeah. Where because of the sort of angst and rage and all of these sort of negative emotions that Kara feels, she's chosen by a Red Lantern ring and inducted into the Red Lantern Corps. Yeah. Uh, So not only does she retain all of the powers of uh, Kryptonian, but initially when you become part of the Red Lantern Corps, you're sort of like animalistic. Like you sort of lose some of your consciousness. You're just rage. Um, But you obviously you get some construct, some, well, you can't really construct, but like beams and things like that. Because the idea is that your rage is so intense, you can't focus on a construct. Yeah. But, you know, the sort of beams flying, going through space, energy sort of stuff you get with a lantern ring. Um, Red lanterns also have the ability to basically like vomit like this blood plasma, like acid. Jeez. Uh, So you can do that. Um, and then in the case of Supergirl, eventually she's brought to Ismolt, the Red Lantern planet, and a sort of blood ritual is performed, and she gets her sanity, like her consciousness back. Wow. But she's still rage-fueled, but uh, but she can then actually talk and reason and stuff like that. So now Vertigo's Lucifer. Uh, yeah, so uh, Lucifer Morningstar is the actual Lucifer. Yeah, he doesn't really have the, a lot of... The former Lord of Hell, basically. doesn't have a ton of abilities. He has the... He, he can... He has... He can basically, basically speak and convince people to do things based on like uh, what their deepest is, desires are. He is extremely uh, he could I mean persuasive. yeah he could he could he could fuck Supergirl. <laughs> He's really good at that. Um, I'm just saying she's You're, of age. They're both now, adults. You've you've been watching the show a lot. I have. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, he has some extra strength, but definitely nowhere near what Supergirl would have, especially not with the Red Lantern ring. But him from the comics, he does have some other powers, including like some sort of like necromancy yeah some like fire kind of powers yeah sort of pyro. but nothing that really like he's generally sort of invulnerable immortal the only thing i could think of is that he can one just keep dying and coming back and enough to maybe exhaust her right um but that seems unlikely uh yeah my wife's giving me the eyebrows because i said exhaust her <laughs> yeah you know it it's my it's my wife give her the old morning star <laughs> <laughs> Moaning star, more like. Oh, ho, ho. that's your boy. I love it. That's too far for you, though. Jesus. Stupid. Oh, oh, I apologize. It wasn't just wasn't good enough. Um, uh, just like me. I uh, I think that he could maybe convince her to like harm herself based on just being like right. charming and convincing. He could get her to do something that would put her in like harm's way, like in a kryptonite. I, mean, or I, something. I, I think he does have some sort of pers- like he could possibly per- be persuasive but i think the thing with that they also have to have be weak willed to fall underneath that and i think the thing with the red lantern ring is that the rage is so strong that i don't know how easily detoured from their course they can be like it actually might be s- strong enough to like serve as will yeah um 
And and some of those extra powers of the Red Lantern Corps come from like a form of magic. It's not oh, just really? the red light of rage. There's also this sort of like ancient blood magic is wow. sort of part of the ring. Yeah. Basically what the ring does is once it's on you, it starts pumping like the red light of rage in your system. Like you don't even have blood anymore. Yeah. Like it stops your heart. It like it it there's like a magic component to it. So I don't know that she could actually like end Lucifer. Well, no, because he just he's immortal. But I I kind of think she could win a fight. I think so too. I think she'd be physically stronger, and I think some of the the magic and the rage powers from the Red Lantern yeah. thing would be enough to either like nullify or or counteract some of Lucifer's other usual like, totally. tricks and things like that. Yeah. You know, like Kryptonians are crazy powerful as is in comics. Like if you were like, who would win, Superman or Satan? Like it probably be Superman. Super, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But uh, so I, I think I, I'd give it to Red Lantern. Super. I, 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 I would too. Yeah. Yeah. But damn, if I wouldn't hook up with Lucifer. Right. I mean, you'd have no choice. Oh. oh. I mean, I just I would though. You just have to do that. To yeah, me. but you, just, you don't have a choice. <laughs> All right. Next matchup. First fighter. Uh, Andrew Bennett, a.k.a. I Vampire. Wow, I don't even know this character at all. Uh, and up against... I Frankenstein. The f- <laughs> Mogo, the living planet. Whoa. Is this like the living planet from Guardians? From Green Lantern. No, uh, not like Ego. Yeah. Mogo, Ego. I mean, it's a far. You know, they say Mogo, Mo Problem. <laughs> um, right. So... Let's talk about these characters. Andrew Bennett. It just a, sounds like a guy that I went to school with, that he, name. He's from the 16th century. Uh, I did go. I went to a school with a guy named Drew Bennett. <gasps> was I, he a vampire? You know, I never saw him in the day. <laughs> yeah, you went to night school for four years. <laughs> uh, it's actually night court. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's from the 16th century. Bitten by a vampire, becomes a vampire. Spoilers. <laughs> um, but he kind of does the true blood thing. Like, doesn't consume human. Has sex with everything? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that song. I could never watch the full intro all the way through. I love that song. <laughs> when you walked in the air went out <laughs> and everything filled up with doubt don't know who you think you are but I know the night is through I want to do bad things with you so, but but he basically does the thing where he only like drinks like animal blood, and yes. stuff like like do- doesn't um, doesn't harm humans. And actually, the, in, he had he had a series in the New Fifty Two. He's had a Vertigo series. He first appeared in like I think it's like House of Secrets, like the same sort of comic that Swamp Thing made his appearances in. Uh, but basically, Andrew Bennett is like a benevolent, you know, vampire that. Um, sort Why of- the eye? I think that was just the name of the stories. I, he doesn't call himself I Vampire. I think it was just the stories were called. Your dog talks like a caveman. caveman. I Vampire. <laughs> or he's just saying yes. Or he's being like, are you a vampire? He's like, I Vampire. <laughs> or, he's, or, or he specifically just stalks people through the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's an app. Yeah, he's an internet predator. Uh, <laughs> There's a different predator on this list of fighters that we're going to get to later, so we don't need to go there. Well, it just means another time that I can do it. All right. Um, But yeah, so essentially, a benevolent vampire. He has many of your sort of standard packet of vampire powers. Totally. Um, You know, the invulnerability, the speed, the heightened senses, the strength, all that kind of stuff. Um, Who's the other one? Mogo. Mogo, the living planet, is a sentient planet. Uh, who's a member of the Green Lantern Corps. Yeah, I feel like this is a pretty clear um, matchup. And being a living planet, he can basically, he has like geokinesis. He can like move the soil and rocks on him at his will. He can change the weather. He can, he obviously interstellar travel. He could just move around. He, um, he has like sort of fluoro, like kinesis can control like the plant life and everything on his uh, surface. 
Um, Mogo's an extremely powerful uh, Green Lantern. He has a, like a form of telepathy, which is the way he communicates. He doesn't speak. It doesn't go like... Yeah. like he has like a form of telepathy, but that also is how he's the member of the core that directs the rings to find new bearers. Basically, oh. it's not an automatic process. It's Mogo that does it. Wow. So um, that's his function in the core. He's also currently the core's home world because Oa is destroyed oh. or was. I, I'm not super caught up, so it might Oa might be back. But <laughs> but Mogo has basically been a home base for the core. Um, yeah. What do you think? So, I mean, a vampire versus a planet. Here's the thing: if he's on Earth, it's not like he can just crush himself against the Earth because that would just destroy, a, would kill a lot of people. That's true. Yes, Mogo, and he's a Green Lantern, so he can't just kill people. Mogo does have an ability of like gravity manipulation, and he's used it to pull people off other planets. But oh. I don't think he can control it. Like only one person get. get. <laughs> Um, uh, Bennett? Yeah, I mean... I think ultimately just Bennett's powers don't do anything to him. Well, also, I just think that, like, you, you, it's like trying to grab one grain of sand out of the sand. Like, if he's trying to, like, pick a, a person up, he couldn't oh, do sorry, that. Oh, sorry, are you saying Bennett gets it just because Mogo couldn't get him? Yeah. But Mogo is still a Green Lantern. He can still just use the ring to make oh, pincers That's a good punch, point. But, you know, yeah. like, he can make constructs and shit. That's true. Yeah, and then he just pulls him into space and then lets him go. I think he could do that pretty easily. That's a pretty easy and solution. And what can, like, Andrew Bennett do? He's not going to, like, bite the soil. Like, the most he could do is maybe just infect life forms and make them vampiric. But I think, ultimately, that still wouldn't harm Mogo. I, I don't think Andrew Bennett's got a chance in this uh, Yeah, It's it, pretty one-sided. Yeah, I think so. I Officially, you heard it here. <laughs> Controversy over. Planets beat vampires. Uh, yeah, I knew that this has been going back and forth for years, but I think we finally solved it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, let's go the to old the planet versus vampire debate. All right, next one. First, Etrigan. Ooh, Etrigan the demon. Yeah. Nice. Interesting. Very nice. Versus. Versus. Tangent Green Lantern. Okay, we just talked about that character. That's right. So, uh, quick refresher from last week's episode. Uh, Tangent Green Lantern. Uh, on the tangent Earth, Earth Nine, the Green Lantern doesn't isn't connected to Will or anything like that. She's got a lantern on the end of a sort of crook, and basically, I am not a crook. Yeah, it's she's holding Nixon and he's holding the lantern, <laughs> and then <laughs> she puts the lantern down on a grave and can resurrect the dead until they finish their unfinished business. Basically, um, <laughs> yes, yeah. If you died while you were jerking off. The Green Lantern of the Tangent Earth could bring you back to finish your wank. Yeah. And then you would I mean, finally I, be at peace. Just, I had a big meal. Yeah. I need to finish that poop. Yeah, it's just a bunch of fucking soil comes out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that's Tangent Green Lantern. Yeah. Etrigan the Demon. We've talked about him before. Do you remember anything about Etrigan? Uh, he likes to rhyme. He does. He's a rhyming demon. That's yeah. right. Uh, and he is bound. My name is Etrigan, and I'm here to say, "Ha <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a demon now, so that's really cool. Hey, he didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing you have to do. <laughs> I don't like the pressure. I would like to. Just... Yeah. Uh, so he's yes, you're right. He's a rhyming demon, a sort of like aristocratic kind of demon who is bound to a human host, uh, Jason Blood. And this happens in like the old timey days. Like the wizard Merlin is the one that yes. binds them together. Um, and Jason Blood uh, has, some, he can perform some magic on his own, but he usually has to say so it's like, like an 80s band. Gone, Jason gone, Blood. a form of man. Arise the demon Etrigan, he becomes yes. Etrigan and then they can flip back and forth. Uh, Etrigan has like demon powers. He has uh, like super strength and vulnerability. He can breathe hellfire. He's got some sort of magic casting and eldritch blast kind of powers. Um, yeah. Versus then a tangent green lantern who's sort of also connected to that sort of afterlife and sort of spirit world and things like that. So who do you think wins in that fight? I would, I, I, I want to say tangent green lantern. Okay. And why, and why is that? Why do you want to say that? Um, because uh, you can pull out the undead, right. And get them to help him. Right. And it, it just from a sheer number standpoint, I feel like he could just overwhelm Etrigan. Yep. 
Yeah, and I mean, the Green that Green Lantern has some other sort of like can travel through dimensions and has some teleportation abilities and stuff like that too. I think the trick for that one is is it's like a game of evasion. Like that Green yeah. Lantern doesn't necessarily have a ton of like defensive powers, and Etrigan can breathe fire. <laughs> You just need to get enough things in between the two of them, I think. And Yeah, I think, yeah, there would have to be some sort of thing where, you know, like, I don't know if the conceit was that if the Tangent Green Lantern brings people back, it's not like a Black Lantern thing where it just reanimates a corpse. It's like their soul comes back. And we've established in some comics involving Neuron and things like that, that souls are like currency in hell. And the more souls you sort of have domain over the more your power, the greater yeah. your power. So you could maybe make the argument that if enough people were raised or enough of the right people were raised, you could rob Etrigan of some of the souls maybe that fuel. If you could go to like... That fuel him? If you could go to like a place that was like a battle zone for like a battle with Etrigan. Yeah, or something like that. Somewhere like, like a could, lot of people have a specific vendetta against him. could maybe him. rob his power enough to force him to turn back into Jason or something. Yeah, and then yeah. at that point, I think you'd get the upper hand. I could see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think this is almost like that Superman one where I'm inclined to say Etrigan just off the bat. Like, I, I just think From sheer power, but sheer power and, you know, based on like who's got what coming to the table. Yeah. But it, I think like that, if you play with the power and be a little tricksy, then yeah, maybe you'd actually be able to Tote. to do that. All right. Who's next? Holy shit. I like that one. Yeah. You're you're doing very well with this reasoning thing too. <laughs> I don't want that to sound like too much of a surprise, but I thought you were a fucking idiot, but you're a fucking dunce. <laughs> um, first fighter, my man, Aquaman, 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 man, up against ding ding the atom. Oh, Ray Palmer versus Arthur Curry. Knockdown, drag out, no holds barred. I think we both understand these ones pretty well. Yeah. The Atom. Small. Shrinking and uh, shrinking power. Yeah. Uh, Aquaman. Water. King of the seas, talks to fish. Yeah. Who, who wins this one? So here's the thing. If it's underwater, the Atom doesn't really have a much of a chance. I don't know. He can breathe in like a subatomic universe. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well then. I think that... I mean, there's there's the one thing that you can always give for people who can go super small, just so they can just go inside you and then expand and explode your body from the inside. I mean, that's, sure. I mean, if we're imagining that all of these characters are being just crazy ruthless, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely that. I think the thing that I would find interesting in this fight is that Aquaman many times in the comics does a thing where like he will control like microscopic sea organisms. Yeah, yeah. Which and is... he'll make them like choke someone out or like, you know, like glob together and now you're choked or like stop delivering oxygen. To... So it would be tough to like... It would be interesting to see like what can the atom, like the atom himself can shrink, but what can he, if he shrinks down and then Aquaman sends a bunch of fucking like microscopic yeah. like, plankton or whatever shit like after him. It re- like, I guess it happens, really, it know? depends on like how that ability works yeah like does does aquaman like have to point them in a direction or can he just go like get the atom and they fish know where yeah, they're, they're doing it, yeah it's it's not like they're looking to him to give a direct i think it's like it's like a sense like he thinks it and then they get that telepathic impression right yeah yeah but like because it like are they gonna be able to like point and like know exactly where this guy is because i mean Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's when he gets that small. That's possible. Yeah, that's fair. I think I'd be interested in seeing like how that works because Aquaman has demonstrated that. Like, yeah, that's that an interesting application of his power. That's so an interesting we, ability that we don't really get. It'd be like, like the Magic School Bus episode where the white yeah, blood cells come out. That's right. There. Like it would be that shit. Like the Adam would be like, Haha, "I'm small," and then Aquaman would be like, vuh, 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 vuh. "Yeah, you know." <laughs> Here's the thing too. Yeah. Should Aquaman could Aquaman like I know that I know that Mira can do it where you can she can control the like blood in your body and stuff like that. Well, yeah, she's aquakinetic. Yes, yeah. but I wonder, yes, I suppose she could also blood bend by that uh, logic. Yeah, I wonder if uh, he can control the living cells inside of your body because technically your body is mostly water. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I don't know that that's how it works, but he has used his telepathy on non-marine life before. Now he's not that strong at but it. I mean, if he uses it, not does on it count as marine life, life if it lives in water? Because if your body it, is mostly water and 
I think because his powers are a little bit more. Uh, hoo, 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 hoo. I. Well, that's interesting. I think there's a difference between being composed of water and being in water and living in water. And our cells are composed mostly of water, but like we aren't really like marine animals. Right? Well, no, but are, are the cells inside of us that live in that water considered? A- I think there's just water in them. Like I think Mira in in this fight would just like just take all the water out of Yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> Let's save that for when she gets yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, um, yes. I don't know that that works with Aquaman. Interesting. Uh, this but is- Aquaman has... I mean, he has tried to use his like telepathy on non-marine animals. And it's been, it, it means he's not that strong against them. Yeah. I think like maybe he'd like give the atom a headache. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I I don't know that he could actually do anything to him that yeah. way. But I like the idea that that he can control the cells and the the microbiological bio, species and stuff. That yeah. when he shrinks down, they could go after him. I like that. Oh, okay. La- last last go. What's your gut instinct? Who wins, Adam or Aquaman? Uh, Adam. I think I'm saying Aquaman. Wow, well, of course I would think you would. I'm fucking loyal. Yeah, <laughs> to my king. Now I feel like you're just talking about Jason Momoa. Yeah. What, what are you? What are you talking about? My man. My man. For life. I wish. All right. Let's. Uh, next. Are you fucking kidding me. The Batman who laughs. Oh Jesus. Oh no. Oh, versus. <laughs> Ozymandias. That's actually a fucking crazy one. Yeah. All right. Ozymandias is the ultimate sort of villain in Watchmen. He was a member of the Watchmen. He's the world's smartest man on that earth. Yep. Um, Adrian Veidt is his real name. He's uh, exceedingly wealthy. Adrian Veidt. Adrian Veidt. He's an expert basically in anything he does. From Adelaide. Uh, yeah, I got it. I was okay. just moving on. <laughs> Too good for you, eh? I get it. Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> you know why you come to this podcast for the sound of music references? <laughs> <laughs> no, they come obviously for the chorus line references. Or, or Les Mis last time. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, Two, eight, one. <laughs> Empty chairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, fuck, what was I saying? Oh, uh, right, Ozymandias. So uh, Adrian Veidt, he's basically an expert in anything that he decides he wants to be an expert in, from uh, multiple disciplines of science, from engineering to martial arts to just literature, business, basically anything. He's uh, he's like a super Batman that way. He doesn't have powers, but he has incredible reflexes. He's in peak physical condition, and he's basically mastered anything he's ever tried. Um, the Batman who laughs uh, is a relatively new character. This is a Joker Batman. This is the Joker Batman from Earth minus one of the most Earth terrifying minus, looking characters. Which maybe it's Earth minus. Well, I don't remember which one actually. It's from a minus Earth, from the dark multiverse, a, yeah. one of these broken Earths. And on this world, dark the, metal. the Batman finally kills Joker. He just he has to do it, and he kills the Joker. And the Joker's sort of final thing is that he infects in killing him. He infects Batman with basically this mutagen that turns that makes him a Joker. Yeah, it it uh, overrides his morality. So he's Bruce Wayne. Like he doesn't change his DNA. He's still Bruce Wayne. He's still the Batman with all of the Batman smarts and training and Jesus. strategy, but with the Joker's mora- like morality, morality and insanity and just like not giving a shit. Yeah. Uh, and, and cruelty and all of that. So it's Batman and the Joker combined into one. He's maybe the most dangerous character in the DC universe yeah. right now. Um Although he's not necessarily showing it right now, but he's exceedingly dangerous. I mean, he almost succeeded in destroying the entire multiverse. Yeah. And there's a guy without powers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, so they both, Ozymandias and the Batman Who Laughs, are like the character you would expect to be multiple steps ahead. Yeah. What What do you think? My inst- this, is like, this is actually a very crazy one. My instinct is to say that the Batman who laughs would win, just from the pure stance that he would be able to. He would tr- he would basically make Ozymandias insane by basically going like, "You can't beat me because you can't you can't understand the way that I think," yeah. and that would make Ozymandias try to master being like 
the Batman who laughs, therefore driving him insane. It's funny that you say that because that's basically the premise of this current Batman who laughs really? series is that he's still in Gotham and Bruce can't beat him. So Bruce gets himself infected yeah. and starts becoming him so he can think like him. Yeah. It was just essentially that, like he's sort of losing himself. At, well, there you go. Yeah. This character. Um, I will say the Batman who last does have a physical weakness to nth metal, which is the ninth metal is sort of bound to sort of magic. Well, yeah, in a sense. Yeah. And things like that. It's one of the metals of sort of creation and yeah. the multiverse and that sort of thing. But beyond that, um, I, I think it's the Batman who laughs too. Also, right? Mandius is very smart and very good, but he's, but even, even the cruelest thing he has done, he's done with the belief that it's less cruel than not doing it. Yeah. Whether or not he's right, that's what he believes. Yeah. Whereas the Batman who laughs is completely unchained. Yeah. From that sort of thing. Like it's cruel for cruel sake. Like you can't predict it. You can't outsmart it. You can't plot ahead of it it's, because there's not like even the logic of like what would you try to do to achieve this you it, know what i mean it's bad it, it's it's batman without the code it, well yeah exactly and the and, thing that that jessica likes the most about batman the code yeah um so we're both saying batman who laughs yeah i'm sorry dark multiverse dark multiverse wins this round that's he's just thing. he's just too unstoppable exactly yeah Next. which is almost the problem with that character is like I feel like in this current Batman Who Laughs series, it's like you went from almost destroying the multiverse to like it's taking five issues and you haven't poisoned the reservoir yet. Like, yeah, like this shouldn't be this hard. Bring in you. Superboy Prime. Let's see those two. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Uh. <laughs> I'm there. Who would win that? I, I really don't fucking know. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. I'm tempted to say the Batman who laughs still, but Superboy Prime could just run and just punch him. That's what like, I mean, right? <laughs> He's been known that's, to do that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sorry, Panther. Uh, <laughs> all right. Name like Panther. What do you expect? Next fight. First. First fighter. Batman Beyond. Oh. Terry McGinnis. Up against Superboy Prime. Oh. <gasps> We almost got the Superboy Prime Batman. Who wow. Last but we get Superboy Prime versus Batman Beyond. So. Superboy Prime. <laughs> well, do let's talk it out. Talk, yeah. it, talk it out a little bit. So Batman Beyond is Terry McGinnis. Mm -hmm. So this is from the future. Uh, Batman retires. He's an old man. Terry McGinnis uh, becomes a new Batman after some, you know, like, you know, like, whoa, found the Batcave, <laughs> like that kind of shit. Uh, he becomes the new Batman and you discover much later that he's actually like half a Bruce Wayne. He's actually Bruce Wayne's son because Amanda Waller had taken some Bruce Wayne DNA and like basically like knocked his mom up with it because she believed that the world needed a Batman. Wow. And so she creates one her, her, it's her project called batman beyond is to wow so i didn't know that she does that and that come in the show yeah wow and, and the idea is that she also hires the phantasm to murder terry's parents in and like she's going to make the batman wow but the phantasm's like i can't do it i know what it did to bruce i'm not going to be a part of this but then terry's dad ends up dead anyway just by accident wow so he has a little bit of that tragedy but yeah. waller's plan was like the genes are there Let's fucking kill them in an alley. Let's let's make us a Batman. Wow. Let's, yeah. But Terry McGinnis uh, be, becomes Batman. Bruce is his mentor and sort of like his Alfred. He's the guy in the cave. And uh, uh, he, so he's got a future Batman suit that has different tech. He can fly, for example, like yeah. actually legitimately fly, not yeah. just glide or grapple. He can walk on walls and he's got, you know, like all sorts of sort of future tech things, repulsors and yeah. whatnot. Um, Superboy Prime, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> Superboy Prime is from before the first crisis on Infinite Earths. He's he is like the most po powerful possible version of Superman. Yeah. Um, he's like that sort of pre-crisis. Like Superman is basically God can do anything sort of power level. And when he turns bad in Infinite Crisis, he escapes. A Speed Force prison. He builds an armor for himself out of the old anti monitors like armor that feeds yellow sunlight directly into him to supercharge his power. Jeez. He 
fights both Earth-1 and Earth-2 Superman, kills the Earth-2 Superman, and like, and that's after he is being flown through a red sun. That's and like, crazy. He's, he's the most insanely powerful he's Super Saiyan ever. Superman. Yeah, I mean, his prison, I told you, was at the center. He's over 9,000. Yeah, he was at the center of like a red sun, basically, with 50 green lanterns, like <laughs> and imprison, still, imprisoning him. Yeah, and still gets out. And he still manages to get out. With some assistance from yeah, the Sinestro yeah, yeah, Corps, yeah, but still, still like, yeah. he's wildly powerful. I mean, so it's clearly Superboy Prime. I think it has to Yeah, be. yeah, there's literally... No, like, there's no bit in Infinite Crisis where Batman beats Superboy Prime. Yeah, like, no. Like, that's not even broached. He's, yeah, and this isn't even full Batman. This is, like, young I mean, Batman. I think part of the reason that you brought him up last round was because it's the idea of, like, someone... Unhinged like the hero, but unhinged. Bit. And yeah. once he turns bad, he really is unhinged. Like, there's nothing to stop him from using his powers the way Superman wouldn't. Like, yeah. Superboy Prime would not be above just, like, ripping the Earth in two. Yeah. You know, and he could do it. He's destroyed whole universes. Like, he's... I, I, I'm I, sorry. Batman yeah. Beyond fans. This is just the luck of the draw, but, like, Terry can't do this. No. The kryptonite's not enough no. that's, and that's the thing right Bruce has got kryptonite he's got good skills in that but like eh, Terry can't do this no Terry's got good friends they're powerful Terry's there's a, gonna, there's Terry's Superman gonna die. <laughs> there's Big Barda you know but none like, of them are none of them are enough even with Terry's leadership or anything no. like that they're not gonna beat Superboy Prime Terry gonna die yeah sorry that's another very one sided one Terry's gonna die oh so sad alright First one, Teen Titans Go. Oh, the whole team. Yeah, the little the kids. <laughs> Versus. <laughs> so. So. <laughs> My wife was the one who put all of these in here. Okay. And it seems that she may have written in some of her own. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so we have a write-in submission? Yes. We can choose another one, but just so we know, their next one was just a leprechaun. <laughs> do you know what? This is the perfect round for that to come out, though, actually. Because I think there's at least one episode where they do encounter a leprechaun. Really? And yeah. Uh, how does that go? I think the leprechaun generally trounces them. Although I think Beast Boy or and or Robin end up becoming leprechauns. Like the leprechaun tricks them into guarding the gold, and then they become a leprechaun. Really? Yeah, I'm positive this is an episode of at least one episode of Teen Titans Go. That's really funny. And so I, a leprechaun wins. I think the leprechaun wins because he's smarter. He's tricksier than they are. <laughs> because they show up and then you're proud of yourself. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they announced the casting of Leprechaun for season two of Titans. I mean, if you're talking about from the horror movies, Leprechaun <sighs> 2. Was, was that the, like back in the hood? Is that that one? Well, that's one of them, but there's also Leprechaun in space. There's in space. <laughs> Do we want to pick another one? Are we going to keep that as the. I think we should keep that one. That was the... a good round for it. The Teen okay, Titans Go is the right. perfect matchup for it. Well, let's that. keep going. I'm giving it to Leprechaun. Sorry, Do you Teen want to Titans choose the next one? Then? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Ooh. First fighter is Ink. Fight. And Ink up against Uncle Sam. <laughs> Do you mean like the, oh, that's right, the American political, like. Yeah, Uncle, uh, like actual Uncle Sam. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, so let's, yeah, let's go through the characters. Who's Ink? Ink is a Batman Beyond villain. Oh. Uh, she basically is like a. Uh, I think of like Clayface's type of powers, but she is ink, but she can sort of morph, shape, shape shift, like turn into different mm -hmm. shapes or blades, clubs. She can go through grates, all that kind of stuff, but she's made of ink instead of clay, basically, um, which means that she's very difficult to fight. She's super agile. She is tough to actually like contain or hit. She does have a weakness to water. <laughs> Again, sort of similar to Clayface that way. Yeah, that's probably the easiest way to think about it, is those that type of um, power. Um, Uncle Sam is the spirit of the uh, the spirit of America. Like if you think of like the the ideal spirit of America, not mm -hmm. the current spirit of America. Um, 
he brought to life. And basically, like, a dying patriot becomes the host for the spirit of Uncle Sam. And the more people believe in the idea of America, the stronger Uncle Sam is. He's got strength and invulnerability. He can... Um, he can sort of appear and disappear. He can change his size. That's a big power of his, so that he can grow. Um, and he he <laughs> he has this sort of lesser useful power where he can sense like items of intense patriotism, like <laughs> like the Liberty Bell or like <laughs> the, the Declaration of Independence or stuff like like he can sense them <laughs> um, and do what with them? Well, find them. <laughs> It's a shorter movie than Nicolas Cage's. Yeah, but, uh, they're over there. It's, there it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's Uncle Sam. But the thing with Uncle Sam is if people are disillusioned with America, don't believe in it, or they've lost the spirit of freedom and, you know, individual success and just work hard and you can make it, then he loses his power and can dissipate entirely. Yeah. So he's, he's from Earth X, uh, Earth 10, where the Nazis take over. Where he leads the freedom fight, the freedom fighters. So what? It sounds like the movie The Santa Claus. It's a little bit like that yeah. in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to kill Uncle Sam to become Uncle Sam. You don't like put his pants on and then become him. So it's a little different. But but everyone has to go. God bless America. He's coming back. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Uncle Sam versus Inc. In a just straight fisticuffs, Ink has a bit of a tactical advantage. Yeah, um, you know, like uh, the ultimate move again. If we're talking about just fighting with no Ruth, this is just like just drown him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> but you can't drown America. Well, I think that's the counter argument: <laughs> yeah. that like you might drown the body, but someone else will just become Uncle Sam because mm -hmm. you can't. Yeah, I mean, climate change will drown America, but. <laughs> Because she's in, oh fuck! I, I don't oh. just in case just in case that was too quiet for you to hear at home. I need to repeat this because it was a that was a, you just blew this wide open. <laughs> the the thought was that ink being ink could rewrite the Declaration of Independence or one of those like founding documents, and then that would affect Uncle Sam and the source of his power. Well, also like which is a restrict fucking, him. That is a fucking crazy ass. <laughs> That's so good. That's complete well, comic con book. Congratulations. Logic. You just blew this wide the fuck open. I mean, yeah. And really you restrict his powers because it'd be like, you can't do this. You can't do that. I mean, that's not what, it, yeah. He's like, that's not what America stands for. Yeah. The ink. Yeah. Holy shit. Does ink win on a technicality? I kind of think so. That's amazing. I was going to give, I was ready to give it to Uncle Sam. I don't even think it's a technicality. I no, think it's. That's just straight up it. Yeah. That's amazing. Jess. Ink gives them the old <sighs> Jess, would would you like to replace Richard on the show? <laughs> she, this is all I have left. <laughs> She's taken everything else. And yeah, once that divorce goes through, she'll take the rest. Not if I get ink. <gasps> uh, uh, yep. There you go. Next. I was, well, I was going to say, should we take a break? Oh, yeah. Uh, the Dr. DC podcast will be back after this quick break. Hey everybody, it's Willem Dafoe here. I just wanted to take a second to recommend some great podcasts that are available now in Stitcher Premium. You can trust me, Peter. I've been like a father to you. You've probably heard about Marvel's hit scripted podcast, Wolverine The Long Night. Gizmodo called it the X-Men crime drama podcast I never knew I wanted. Now Wolverine is back and in a brand new season of the podcast. And you can only hear it on Stitcher Premium. This season's called Wolverine, The Lost Trail, and it picks up with Logan in the Louisiana Bayou. You know, you can hide a lot of crime in the bayou. A lot of bodies down there. But I mean, I didn't, Peter. You can trust me. The story was written by comic book author Benjamin Percy, who stars Richard Armitage from The Hobbit or Hannibal or Berlin Station as Wolverine. Then, if you're looking for a new sci-fi comedy podcast set on a space station in the distant future, then you should check out EOS 10. It's the story of two maladjusted doctors. I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm completely well-adjusted. 
and their medical team abroad and in, aboard an intergalactic travel hub on the edges of deep space. Kind of like Scrubs, the TV show, but in space. With Stitcher Premium, you can also get thousands of hours of original and ad-free content. It's fine. Come on in. You can get your comedy bang bang. You can get your Kevin Smith Smodcast. Just come closer. Come a little bit closer, Peter. Plus, you get early access to new releases, exclusive bonus episodes, and archives of your favorite other podcasts, and hundreds of stand-up comedy albums. Godspeed, Peter, to get a free trial. You get to go to stitchapremium.com and you use the promo code DC. I was like a podcaster, you stitch. I've been like an ad to you. <laughs> and now, back to the show. <laughs> We're back. Hey. Oh. Hip hop hooray. Oh. All right. Let's go. What's our next matchup? Beep, 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 beep. News? Uh, no, that's different. That's so Use your fucking ears, man. <laughs> First, what? Uh, we got another record. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's our right on? <laughs> The cast of the American Office. Okay, okay, but but does this mean like the actors or the characters? Characters. The characters. Oh, the characters okay. Like the, the right. The Sorry. So the staff of Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Uh, Scranton. Yeah. Uh, versus. Versus. Crazy Jane. <laughs> well, I mean, it's interesting. It's multiple it's people. Multiple people and multiple people. Sure. Uh, so you're familiar with the Office. We don't need to go into that. Um, Crazy Jane. Uh, for anyone watching Doom Patrol, you're getting more and more familiar with Crazy Jane. But for anyone that's not watching that show, first of all, what the fuck you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and secondly, it's okay. I haven't finished. Uh, Crazy Jane is basically a character with uh, multiple personalities, like like sixty four, but like different personalities, and each one has, has a different superpower. Not yeah. all have powers, but the ones that do, they're different from each other. Yeah. So as they as each character sort of comes to the surface, takes takes over, yeah. then those powers manifest. So um, some of the ones that are in comics or on TV, you know, we've seen Hammerhead, who's uh, super strong, basically. Uh, Silver Tongue, who basically makes words appear and turns them into knives and can throw them. Mm -hmm. There's one called um, Flame and Katie, who basically fire powers. Um, there's... Uh, <sighs> Oh shit! There's I don't know. There's there's so many. There's sixty four of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Okay, but let's try to think of it like I'm, this: the the cast of The Office. If you were to say that they had abilities, you could say that like Jim was a master at at pranks and tactician. <clears throat> sure. Uh, yeah. uh, Dwight is is a is a combat specialist. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, that uh, you know. Uh, um, uh, what else do we got here? Uh, Kevin can eat. Can uh, Kevin can eat anything, uh, and is willing to. Um, you, uh, uh, Michael is really the Joker of the bunch. <laughs> oh no! I mean, the uh, um, Creed knows how to kill a man. <laughs> so, and, <laughs> maybe has. Yeah. Uh, Toby is also probably in there because he's definitely the Scranton Strangler. <laughs> yep. Uh. uh the, we have uh, Andy uh, uh, has uh, strength. Sure. Yes. Yeah. He's got like the he's got like rage a, strength, bar like barbarian berserker strength. Yeah. yeah exactly. exactly yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh. 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 What's oh Daryl? Uh. Is, probably has some sort of like Jigglypuff hypnosis singing. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um. Uh. Ryan can convince people to do kind of anything. He has the ability to, to He's convince a good people. Persuader, yeah. yeah, yeah. Persuasiveness. Um, I think Phyllis could probably fashion anything. She's good with the knitting. She can probably have some sort of superhuman knitting ability. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kelly uh, 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 can use the race card. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, interesting. Um, Stanley can. Well, he's yeah. got the power of di di diabetes. Yeah. He's got access to Stan needles, I guess. Or Stanley could stick it up your butt. 
that's <laughs> well yeah stanley could you know walk over there you know grab you by the shoulder and then stick it up your butt <laughs> um these are all kind of useful they're most of these are like tactile human skills like jim which, could trap you in jello which in a fight with some of the personalities of crazy jane would come in very handy here are some personalities against which these powers are these powers we've ascribed the office are completely moot yeah lucy fugue has radioactive bones and see-through skin <laughs> <laughs> so it just makes everybody sick from She's just yeah flit can teleport uh sex bomb is a female personality that explodes when explodes when aroused wow um, <laughs> so there's that um sex bomb sex bomb it's tom jones yeah <laughs> uh lady purple can see the future Wow. So could maybe use that to outthink the the team. Yeah. yeah. Um uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. though you could never Oh, a black uh black <laughs> black anus, not anus. Um because that, that's Stanley has uh, like claws and and stuff like that. So it's just like kind of like vicious and things like that. She could become baby doll and then none of them want to fight her. That's true. You know, like she could kind of trick them that way. Yeah, but Dwight's really good with, with babies. Mm, interesting. Uh, what about the hangman's beautiful daughter who can physically activate her own paintings? Because then she could maybe even take like Pam's paintings Whoa. and, use them, and use them against her. That's a good point. I'm tempted to give it to Crazy Jane. I also because that's the DC uh, contribution to this yes, particular matchup. I kind of have to agree with that. But I think, I, yeah. I think you got to give it to Crazy Jane. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Right. Oh, what? Oh, I just want to since I, I yeah I pulled up the list because I can't possibly remember all the yeah. things. But Scarlet Harlot is a nymphomaniac with the power to create ectoplasmic projections and absorb stray psychosexual energy. And I mean, Dwight's so, got a lot of that. So Dwight Ryan yeah. Creed oh, Meredith, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's, she could, she'd be too powerful. <laughs> yeah, Meredith has the ability to keep drinking and and not be an alcoholic. I think Meredith's ultimate superpower is a lack of embarrassment. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no shame. I love the part at the very last season when they were like, uh, they were asking him like if they had any problems with the filming. And there she was like getting like her PhD or something the whole yeah. time. <laughs> She's like, you never showed them that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. All right, our next matchup, Lobo. The main man. Hey, it's Lobo here. He's one mean bastard. What's the thing he says in the trailer for the next season of Krypton? Of Krypton? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, he's just like, he's like, hey, I'm Lobo. Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> hey, I'm walking here. Lobo versus Aztec. Oh, this is an interesting combo. So we know Lobo. He's the last Zarnian. He's largely invulnerable. Ex uh, insane healing factor. Very violent uh, bounty hunter. He wears a lot of no surrender shirts. Yeah, yeah. He's very metal. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> he mainly shops at uh, oh, what was that? What was the name of that shop? It, that store in in the nineties uh, that at the in the mall. I'm gonna need so much more than that. What was the one in Devonshire Mall that the one? Randy yeah, Randy, <laughs> Randy River. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. yeah. So Lobo is super strong. He's like, got chain wallet. Well, he's got that. He's got that like chain gun. Yeah. He's got like a hook on the end of it. Yeah. He's a he's a mean motherfucker. He doesn't give a shit. Rides a motorcycle. Yeah. And only listens to the offspring. The I love and like they were writing him to basically make fun of how hyper violent Wolverine was, but they they couldn't actually swear or stuff. So he says stuff like bastitch or like frag it. Yeah. And some, but some of it, even though it's like gibberish, you can tell how misogynist it is. Like, <laughs> like I think in young justice in the cartoon, anytime he's fighting a woman, he calls them keezy femmes. You're like, Oh, like uh, that's not even words, but like, yuck. Jesus, man. Um, but that's Lobo, the main man, uh, Aztec, I think we have talked about Aztec, but do you remember? No, that? I'm trying to remember. I so, mean, I'm assuming some sort of Aztecian the, background. The <laughs> first Aztec or in comics, his name was Kurt Falconer or Uno. He also went by. But basically, he inherits this uh, helmet from an organization called the Q Foundation, which is basically the modern-day equivalent of the followers of the Aztec god 
Quetzalcoatl, who's the sun god. And basically this helmet uh, not only imbues powers of, you know, strength and speed and flight and things like that, but it also gives you the memories and the knowledge of every previous Aztec. Um, and basically his function is to protect the world from the return of Tezcatlipoca, the shadow god, the Aztec shadow god. Uh, there's a, currently a, a new Aztec, uh, a woman whose name I do not remember, um, who showed up in like Steve Orlando's Justice League of America and then showed up in Wonder Woman mm. and stuff like that. Uh, but basically, yeah, Aztec has a lot of like energy projection powers, the strength, speed, you know, your sort of standard packet of things. But also, yeah, all of this sort of knowledge um, of the previous Aztec warriors. Um, it's an interesting one. Uh, it's yeah. not like it, you're not going extreme in either direction, right? I mean, Aztec does have a secret weapon that, that Kurt Falconer used, which is like basically detonating all of the power in the suit and like a massive explosion. Also, Uno has the ability to break apart families in a single night. But. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, could flip it and reverse it, can pull the Missy Elliott. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think. I think that with the 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 Aztecs' powers would mean that they could do damage to Lobo, you know, even like dismemberment kind of like yeah, damage, blow him totally. apart. But Lobo has such an insane, like beyond even Deadpool kind of healing factor that ultimately you got to think Lobo wins. There will always be another Aztec though. Like, I think they could yeah. just go back, like, he'll yeah. just kill the next Aztec, but then they'll remember because they'll have the helmet. It's a, but it's, Aztec could keep, like, ripping him apart and he would just keep growing back. It's like a Hawkman, Hawkwoman sort of scenario. Almost, yeah. But, I mean, just, like, skirmish to skirmish, who do you think would just win? Uh, even if the Aztec. fight keeps going forever. Aztec. You think Aztec? Yeah, just from, like, I mean, the exploding thing won. I mean, I mean L- Lobo is not smart. Yeah. So if you, it is, and if he had the 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 knowledge of generations of people, it, he's easy to outmaneuver. He's just got like the brute strength and the sort of ruthlessness going for him. But I think if you had any sort of yeah, plus he smokes cigarettes. Yeah, so he's got emphysema and drinks <laughs> drinks orbits. Oh no! <laughs> God, those fucking drinks were so gross. And you should see his disc man. It's got at least one CD in there. I mean that. Were there disc men that could have more than one CD? No. I was going to say, what the fuck was that? Like a, <laughs> carrying around like a five disc changer yeah. with like a car battery attached to <laughs> it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I agree with you. I think Aztec gets that one. He's got a lot of Spice Girls bubble gum. And I'm all out of, bu- oh no, I see. <laughs> got all the Spice Girls. <laughs> I'm all out of Spice Girls. I literally only have bubble gum. <laughs> it's not very good. It's pretty hard. <laughs> all right, next. Ding, ding. All right. Who we got? Num- oh, running out a little bit. Not really. Um, first, Commissioner Gordon. Ooh. Oh, this could be a very easy one. Or a different- Yeah, I hope this person can't easily evade the police. <laughs> <laughs> Versus Buana Beast. R- right. In a, in a fight, we're yeah. talking. <laughs> Can Commissioner Gordon just call on Batman? <laughs> <laughs> Right, so com- with Commissioner Gordon, first his first turn, he activates the bat signal. It's super effective, <laughs> as if like the turn-based strategy that we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, like yeah. a real-time, st- like yeah, turn-based uh, Japanese RPG. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Buana Beast, let's go back over his abilities. Buana Beast is the original. Buana one. Beast, Buana Beast, Buana Beast. His Buana, name is Buana, Buana, Buana Beast. His name is Mike Maxwell, and he. Is a white guy in in DC comics that finds in Kenya or like Ethiopia or, or is it Kenya is that where Kilimanjaro is? Yeah, sure. But basically, he finds this helmet and this elixir in a cave, and when he puts the helmet on and drinks the elixir, he becomes Bawana Beast, and he can. What if he just drank the elixir? Well, then he'd have to shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to do both, man. Oh, okay. Uh, no, he gets he gets the ability to sort of control animals, um, and he has his you know some agility, kind of like Tarzan kind of level yeah. stuff. And then he, his other weird, unique power is that he can make chimera. He can take any two animals and put them together, where they get the best features of each. Yeah, 
Um, like he could be like frog rhino and you just get this like armored thing that could jump like three miles or something like that basically wannabe sounds like an energy drink it does that's the text i just got from jessica <laughs> <laughs> but what a beast now in mango do you want to do you want a drink but want a beast <laughs> i want a but what cut <laughs> but want a drink but want a beast <laughs> That's it. That's the one. Yeah. Buana drink. Buana peas. <laughs> Very offensively in the comics, he was briefly referred to as the white god of Kilimanjaro. Yeesh. Uh, his successor is uh, is a, a black guy who goes by Freedom Beast. Um, but basically, Yikes. yeah. So Buana Beast was it can... French Beast before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, so Moana Beast can control animals and can make Chimera. Commissioner Gordon has a gun. <laughs> uh, Which definitely beats now, animals. Now, I, I will say, Moana Beast is not bulletproof. Like, he's not, like, yeah. invulnerable. He's just an animal. Right? He's just, he's a, a human with some strength and agility, but but really the stuff he's bringing to the table is, like, other things, yeah. right? Like, if Gordon gets a shot in, he can kill Moana Beast. I mean, and, 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 and I mean, police these days in America... Have a lot of access to like assault rifles. Well, he probably and wouldn't shoot a Bawana, tank. He probably wouldn't shoot Bawana Beast. He'd shoot Freedom Beast. He probably but. has a. <laughs> he probably has a tank. Oh, what, yeah, Gordon. Yeah, yeah. I get what you said there. That was yeah. I mean, bad but good. I was making a I'm making commentary. I know. Yeah, that's what this podcast's about. Serious, Social commentary. Serious commentary. Um, I I actually think I might give this to Gordon. It really depends Gordon, on the context. I think Gordon's got. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess we're not doing the thing where it's like, what arena are they fighting in? I guess if they're just in the jungle, then yeah, Gordon's fucked. Yeah. But like in the city. The, well, unless what, you're talking what, about Batman International, then you potentially have access to that. Batman. But also like if they're in a city, like what fucking animals is Bawana Beast going to fuse together? Like someone's fucking pet parrot and a raccoon. Like yeah. what's that going to do? Like <laughs> True. It really depends on lo- location. Yeah. yeah. You, better, you better fucking hope they're fighting in a zoo. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's true. I, I think I'm giving it to Gordon. I think Gordon, as a as a police commissioner, has some sort of tactical ability and things like that. He's also like a great marksman. He's got a mustache. And he's got grit for fucking days. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think... The fact that he hasn't been if, killed... If someone just released a tiger in gotham gordon would kill it well you got to think about this i bet i bet police like police officers in uh, gotham are getting taken out like constantly so the fact that he's been in that job as long as he has is like you don't fuck with the top yeah exactly he's the only one i imagine if he opens this trench coat it looks like that scene in the matrix was like please remove all the metal you have on you and it's just like (laughs) fucking strapped he's just like (laughs) pulls one out of his mustache (laughs) yeah pulls one the mustache holds a mini revolver. <laughs> a little tiny <laughs> hand comes out. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, Commissioner. We've got you dead to rights. Do you? Nice. You don't fuck with my lip. That's what the mustache says. <laughs> Sounds like something from like one of the early DC comics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Daddy Spank. We've, we've talked about Gordon's prehensile mustache before, right? His sentient prehensile mustache. Yeah, obviously. It extends out, can grab things. You know. Yeah, I mean, not to like besmirch a character with actual powers, but I think Gordon's got this. I think he might. Yeah. Is this my turn now? Yep. Oh, we're getting there. <sighs> Fuck you, Matt. Oh, God. Bueno Bu- excelente. Is this Chicken Matty? Yeah. Oh. He submitted bueno excelente. Bueno excelente. A very... Uh, Versus... Social... Mm, no. <laughs> Versus Music Meister. Well. So, Bueno Excelente. We talked about him in, in, I think it's episode 69, the Inappropriate Moments episode. Yes. Because Bueno Excelente, he's a member of uh, Section 8. So, the sort of like ridiculous character, like six pack dog welder, uh, the defenestrator, characters like that. Yep. But Bueno Excelente has no powers. He only says the words Bueno or Excelente, and literally the only ability he has is sexual assault. <laughs> uh, that's all he does. Sounds like a character. It's not even like with. he's like preternaturally good at it. He just does it. That's it. 
That's literally all he brings Jesus. to the table. He's a sex offender. That's it. Jesus. So fuck you, Matt, for making a Sam out loud. Although I put him on the list. Okay, fine, it's times. my fault. I'm going to own this yeah. one, but still fuck you. Yeah. Um, Music Meister. Do you remember that crossover episode of The Flash with Supergirl? I do. So the Music Meister I, isn't yes. really like a comic character so much as he showed up in cartoons. He's in like the Lego Batman game. He showed up on The Flash. He basically has the ability to like turn things into a musical. He can sort of manipulate reality a little bit but like to make things musical and it's and in doing so that sort of affects oh, people's God. emotions it makes them do songs and dances it makes them like have like emotional realizations they wouldn't normally have had um i don't but yeah that's music meister do you know where that turns into well it, it turns I'm gonna into, rape gonna rape gonna rape you now I'm gonna rape, Jesus. Rape, 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 rape. i mean that's so, i was just gonna say it turns into that fucking scene from clockwork orange but you made it somehow less tasteful <laughs> that's what i'm here for that's what i bring to the table jesus uh, uh I, I, I think the best case scenario is that whatever the music meister does is like a situation in which bueno excelente can't rape and has some sort of emotional realization that what he's doing is horribly wrong unless he just goes straight and then for he, the rape and he does like the the javert thing and kills himself because of it unless he just goes straight for the raping i'm giving it to music meister only just because he has reality altering abilities. and you just don't want and fuck that i'm not making yeah bueno excelente doesn't get to win anything okay he's a rapist uh, uh, fine. That's uh, I can draw a line there. That's fine. I didn't like this round. Right, well, you put it in there. Yeah. So did he. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you <laughs> fucking god damn it! <laughs> All right, first contender, Mira. Oh, Mira, no. Mira. Hey, bueno, excelente, Mira, no. Mira. I'm sorry. How dare you? <laughs> it's your fault. Versus Jimmy Olsen. Mira versus Jimmy Olsen. Oh, poor Jimmy. Well, unless he can pull in Superman. I feel like I've done a lot of talking because I'm the one that's sort of setting up the character. But you know Mira. Why aren't you? Mira, Mira. What are Mira's abilities? What can Mira do? Aqua telekinesis. Aqua kinesis. She has aqua kinesis, yeah. Uh, plus all the regular Aquaman Eve abilities. She can't talk to animals. No, but she can breathe, survive underwater, swim super fast. Yes. She gets like the durability and the strength. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Versus. Jimmy Olsen, who's a photographer. Right. And, you know, friends with Superman. R- right. So if we got, we're talking about Commissioner Gordon things, again, the ability to pull on. Well, but we didn't actually allow Gordon calling Batman. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, we go back to the thing that we said before, which is Mira could just, you know, pull his w- water out of his body and he's dead instantly. Uh, yeah, there was briefly a period though where jimmy did get some powers uh i think it was in the lead up to final crisis i can't remember what he was called he was called like action boy or action man or something like that but he would basically he would basically get powers that were like useful in a situation yeah he couldn't control when he would get them or things like that but they would always ended up being useful um, so it's entirely possible that if it was that sort of area, oh, it's Mr. Action. That's what he was called. Um, that Mr. Action was my father. It's, it's possible that he would get some sort of power that would counteract the water thing, or okay. at the very least protect him. So Mira couldn't just dehydrate him and that would be it. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Mira's powers, though, she could do more than just that. Like, she basically uses water the way like lanterns use light. Yeah, she can make the water into things, yeah. blades, uh, armor, a gun. Like she, like she could do whatever. It's still water, but it's hard water. You mean ice? <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's hard water. <laughs> I don't know. It's not cold. It's not like frozen. It's just hard. Like, how do you harden water? How do you harden light? It's comic books. Just oh, I mean, fair enough. <laughs> That's where we're going to pull this apart. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you can't argue with that, I We've guess. gotten this far in to this podcast, and now we're going to start <laughs> pulling it apart. <laughs> I mean, I I think it's got to be Mira. She's too yeah. powerful. Even if Jimmy had his Mr. Action abilities, I, I don't think he'd ever get enough to fully incapacitate her. Yeah. And I don't think he is good enough on his feet. No, God, no. You know, to be able to use his powers, even if he could. 
The only thing I could say was that maybe he like took some l- lewd photos of her when she wasn't looking <laughs> oh, so- and then blackmailed her. Right, so we're saying that Jimmy, right, we're using his photography abilities. Yes. Right, so he caught, like, Mira stepping out on Aquaman yeah. or something like yeah. that. Right, or that she's got, like, a gambling problem. She's, yeah. like, gambling, like, priceless relics of Zebel yeah. away. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, the Jimmy Olsen blackmail uh, angle is pretty dark. <laughs> um, that's, that's what I'm I suppose, for. technically, that would be a way to win. C- certainly not a physical confrontation, but yes. Not I, morally, but, or ethically. Yeah, he could, I suppose that's how he could do that. There we go. Okay. Yeah. As long as I found a way for both. <laughs> Jesus. Next. Pitch black. <laughs> um, all right. First. God damn it. No. Oh, did Jessica put it in it's another one? fucking write-in one? Who is it? The pedal file. <laughs> oh, I wish there was Bueno Excelente. Who, lest we forget, has the ability to summon the bicycle they need most. Yep. Yep, for that situation. Which is a fucking weird ass power versus the Red Hood. Red Hood shoots him. Red Hood wins. Well, he suddenly had a bulletproof bicycle that he hid behind. A, po- a Pope bicycle? Yeah. Like, right. Um, okay. Your move. Sorry, is a bulletproof bicycle just a type of bicycle? Yeah, why not? Okay. Your move. Um, Red Hood, like, just puts a stick in the spokes. Well, luckily, it's a bike that doesn't have spokes. Oh, like the fucking Tour de France. Yeah. No! (laughs) Pedal file! (laughs) (laughs) Probably don't yell that with the window open. Oh, okay, here's what happens. Okay. The Red Hood removes the training wheels, and Pedal File falls over, and the Red Hood uh, shoots him in the face. <laughs> yeah, but he just keeps pulling up new training wheels. Anytime a bike he Oof. needs. A ne- never-ending Jesus. access. Red Hood? Hood. The Red Hood poses as a bike enthusiast <laughs> selling pedals on Kijiji <laughs> or Craigslist. Right. Again, just in case that didn't make yeah. it to the mic, Jess's suggestion is that the Red Hood goes online and catfishes Pedal File by pretending to be a bicycle enthusiast. And then Chris Hansen and then Chris Hansen comes out from the kitchen and catches Pedal File. And, oh, yeah. uh, Red yeah. Hood wins it. Surprisingly, Red Hood wins. I didn't think he was going to make mean, it. Thank goodness, at least in this case, justice prevailed. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus, All right. Fucking god damn it. <laughs> the write in entries have been a fun addition, though, I will say. All right. Next. Yep. One star girl. Okay. We've had a we've had a star man. That's right. Time for star girl. Versus <laughs> Gnort. Jesus. Someone had to do it. All right. Well, Gnort. Uh, Gnord is a Green Lantern. He basically has Green Lantern abilities, but he's also the dumbest creature ever to wield a Green Lantern ring. Um, he's not smart. He like he's mostly incompetent. Yeah. And the odd time that he's actually accomplished something, he's actually like fucked up something else for someone else. Like the one time he saves someone is the one time he shouldn't have when the Scarlet Skier was like trying to kill himself. <laughs> yes. And he stops that from happening. And then the Scarlet Skier doesn't even get the sweet release of death. Hashtag yeah. sweet release. Hashtag sweet. Uh, <laughs> Stargirl is uh, ultimately uh, she inherits two superhero legacies. One of them is Starman. Yep. We talked about Jack Knight and Ted Knight, his predecessor. She inherits the cosmic staff of Starman, but she also inherits the cosmic converter belt of the Star Spangled Kid, which gives her uh, like agility, durability, speed, stamina, strength. Yeah. So she has all of that in addition to having like energy projection and flight from the cosmic staff. So she has basically she, she has all of the powers of Starman plus because she has this belt on, she gets some like superhuman strength and durability things yeah. that Jack Knight wouldn't have that he'd have to use the staff. Totally. Um, so star girl is more formidable that way. Yeah. But she's a teenager, you know, she's just learning, you know, like she doesn't have the experience, let's say, um, 
And sorry, who's she up against? Gnort. Fucking Gnort. I mean, it's Stargirl. Like, why? I'm explaining so much, but it's, it's well, Stargirl. Well, hold I mean, on. Gnort has a far more powerful weapon. The Green Lantern Ring is the most powerful weapon in the universe. Here's the but... thing. Stargirl's technically a good person. Yes. Gnort is also a good person. He wouldn't want to hurt her. Are we using that logic in these? Why did the Aquaman the Atom, like fight to the death hold on <laughs> but he would accidentally have to he would do it by accident because whenever he's trying to do a good thing oh are we are we saying that Gnort is so impossibly stupid that he stumbles into that like you know in the way where it's like it's a kevin james movie like and a he, pink panther and he manages to yeah he's like a he's like he ends up being beating a super spy Mr. Because, Magoo. yeah he stumbles his way through it well i think that he I, would that, that's a reasonable thing to give Gnort is that he maybe accident like he would just think of something offhand like oh my god i love to do crafts and then his ring would make like a giant pair of scissors or some shit like or like he would be yeah. trying to not fight her because he knows that she's a good person and so would be trying to get away from her but in doing that would end up creating things that would right Right, he in it, yeah, inadvertently. I mean, I can certainly see that in a Gnort fight. Mm -hmm. That's very good logic. Star Girl is, I want to say, still probably gonna be yeah. too competent. Slash, like her tech is very yeah, good. Like yeah. I don't think I just even distracted. I don't think Gnort is quite willful enough to fully tap the potential of that ring. Yeah, it's like if you give someone a, a or out of pure fear, he ends up creating something really powerful right yeah interesting because um, he's so unmatched right i mean fear is the enemy of will but uh, um, interesting i do like the idea of him like mr mcgooing his way yeah. through it though so are you saying Gnort? yeah are you giving it to Gnort? i am i'm gonna give it to star girl because uh, i think we've had enough of incompetent men trumping qualified women destroy the patriarchy 2019 <laughs> Just as well, the strongest woman in this house but smashes through the door. Get get woke, Richard. <laughs> Give me a coffee. Yes, that's what that means. Yeah. All right, next. I love getting woke. I do it every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it with uh with with peppers and cheese and scramble it all up. That's a yolk. Oh, it's different, right? Yeah. No. How how like cringy of a marketing thing would it be if like a, if like the dairy lobby was like we got yolk <laughs> like twenty nine like God that we're only moments like, from that happening Who wants eggs hashtag me too <laughs> Oh God <laughs> Oh my God Like couldn't you see a company yeah. doing that though something just that fucking Yeah Craven Yeah Yeah <laughs> Best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Hashtag get woke. <laughs> I want some too. Hashtag me. Too. I could see a boardroom thinking that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're not going to like this one. Uh, first contender. Is it, is it a write in? Yes. God damn it. Like, look, 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 look. What? <laughs> you crazy. I thought we, I thought we killed him. It's big. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, 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 look. Uh, low rent Borat is back. I need my spinach. I need my canned fish. <laughs> oh God! It loves me cabbage. All right, who is Ukrainian Popeye? Oh, God. God. Ultimate contender. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's just like Martian Manhunter, someone huge. Power girl. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like the power girl. She's so, a nice in the front. So, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, Ukrainian Popeye seems to be... Uh, I like our power girls, yes. He just seems to be creepy uh, in Eastern European. I've got power of cabbage. Yeah, he's got cabbage. And canned fish. Cabbage and fish breath. Um, <laughs> power girl, just a quick recap. Is, <laughs> is, huh? A pierogi bear. I give her the stuffing. Jesus Christ. This is <laughs> fucking off the rails. <laughs> Quick reminder. Power Girl is Kara zor from Earth 2. Uh, displaced to the Prime Earth. She is like a fully adult, grown up. Oh, yeah, she is. Supergirl, basically. She, fully she's adult. Power Girl. She's she's ripped. She's probably got more muscles oh, than Superman. Oh, definitely ripped. Jesus. Rip that shirt. 
Yes, she has the hole in her outfit that yes. you can see the cleavage, but she doesn't you can see her power girls. She doesn't have that anymore. You can't see them. <laughs> oh, you can up here. <laughs> so Ukrainian Popeye is also bringing the power of creepy <laughs> lyric and ogling and and like deviant sexual imagination. <laughs> um, I mean, it's power girls. She just lasers him into non-existence. Yeah, you can't beat cabbage. <laughs> No, you can. <laughs> you can't throw cabbage. Right. So again, if we made this like a turn-based thing, Power Girl would show up and use heat vision against which. Well, Ukrainian thanks for pop- heating up my fish. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then the smell of fish incapacitates everyone. Yes, yeah. oh. Right. Cabbage. <laughs> Gee, you have, you, what great improv. Fish. Your, that character is so three-dimensional. Yes, you know. Glug, 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 glug. You really bring him to life. That's it. It's Power Girl. <laughs> yeah, good day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Who do we got? Who? Jesus Christ. <laughs> is it another right in? <laughs> A lamp. <laughs> Is it a magic lamp? No. <laughs> Just a lamp. Actually, this this might be a fair fight. Is it versus Danny the Street? It's an ambush bug. Oh. <laughs> um. So, uh, for those of you at home who might not know, a lamp a is lamp. a thing. <laughs> Fuck it. That was my fucking joke. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, great minds you get me yeah um ambush bug yeah his name is erwin schwab and he gets this uh suit that was launched from uh by a character named brumel Mm. from the planet schwab uh he saves the planet's gonna be is doomed but he saves his favorite outfit and launches it into space where it encounters a radioactive space spider and then uh, erwin schwab on earth finds it and puts it on and he becomes ambush bug he has uh he basically gets like a he's aware that he's fictional he knows he's in a comic book and he also has some sort of teleportation abilities and stuff like that um hold on does is the lamp like sentient or is it just an object it's just, just an, an object. object. It's not like it has no control over right. itself. Or it's I'm giving thought. it. I'm giving it to the lamp because the lamp is real, and Ambush Bug knows that he isn't. Whoa! And that would mean that he would be like, "How could I possibly?" He would try to reach out of the panels of the comic book to fight the real lamp, Whoa. and uh, and he wouldn't be able to, and he would just be so depressed about it. And I th- I think lamp wins. Wow! What? Who would have thought? What do you think? What if what do you mean what a bug it? lamp? What, like a thing that zaps mosquitoes? I mean, even, oh. then even more so. Yeah, twice as much. Yeah. Two, kudos. This was a match made to happen. Yeah. I, I hate how well some of them have turned out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love them great. <laughs> Jesus. Gibbage. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what do you think? I, I'm giving it to lamp I somehow. Like, I want to give it to lamp. Yeah. All right, let's see. If you say anything other than that, then you're wrong. <laughs> to be honest with you, Giant, I'm a broom. I'm a broom. <laughs> all right, we're, we've got very few left. All right. <laughs> There's, it's all just right It's write-ins. all the right-ins now? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I don't know how they ended up all at the bottom, but... They're weighted. <laughs> That's true. Oh, you know who this is, huh? <laughs> Oh, that logo for the bar? Oh, you know what I'm saying for the bar? You get the crowd as it for you tonight. Oh, yeah, get not not moist underneath. Oh, that. yeah, you get the wet downstairs. <laughs> Logan from the bayou. Yeah, Cajun, little... Cajun Wolverine. Yeah, you know what that means. You get that little spicy. You get that oh, yeah, the water fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Versus? Toy Man. Okay, Toy Man. Um, oh, you like that Toy Man? You like a little tin kid toy? I'm going to go with the original Toy Man, Winslow Shot. He's a Superman villain. Oh, Winslow Shot going to get a shot from me? <laughs> shot from the blade from my little boat. Winslow, <laughs> Winslow Shot, he's the Toy Man. Basically, he um, he's a master like inventor and engineer who basically makes toys, alters toys, or makes things in the form of toys that like have 
weapons in them or you know we'd make like a giant doll that is also a robot with rockets in it like that sort of thing he's like a toy themed like tech gadget you know what toys can't beat toy can't beat no gator Uh, sorry but is cajun wolverine a gator no but he got the power to gators he's got the power of gator and so he's just called wolverine but really he has gator powers yeah that's right there's no wolverine down in that swamp no right so he would just like spin in a circle just thrash around that's right he got the claws you come out there the four knives in their hand I mean, I will say... Chop them up real good. By virtue of just having Wolverine claws, I think Cajun Wolverine would beat Toy Man. Oh, yeah, you got no no power there. Because he would also have the healing factor. Yeah. Um, and You got that spin like from a crocodile. And, you know, if we're talking about, you know... <laughs> Toy Man spent all his toy time playing like as a child with like actual toys. But if you're Cajun, if you're from the bayou, then what, what you play with? You, you play oh. with a gun, you shoot that gator, you make some jumbo liar. No, you're going to play out in there, you get in the swamp, and then you play with the little crow dads. Yeah. you making them run around. Take your little toys. Yeah. You made it You made it less scary sounding than I wanted it. Oh, but, but you can't touch no toys anyways because you got them four knives. Again, I, I sort of can't believe this is happening, but by virtue of the matchup, I think I have to give it to Cajun Wolverine. I mean, he's Wolverine. He's just got like an annoying accent. <laughs> annoying? What you talking about? You're the one who sounded weird. Annoying slash arousing. Oh, bonsoir, mon ami. Yeah, there we go. Good night. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, meow. Uh, just like old gator. <laughs> Yeah, just like a gator would say, <laughs> meow. Meow. <laughs> you got right. a jumbo liar. Who do we got here? You ran out to a man with jumbo liar. Thank you. I don't want that small liar. I no, want you want that liar. jumbo liar. That's right. First fighter. First fighter. Let me hear. Galactic Golem. Oh. Against. That's a that's a space mob monster. It is. Yeah. Against Firestorm. Whoa. So, Firestorm, you you have some familiarity. Do you want to go through like what his powers are? Uh, well, he's uh, uh, two guys. Yeah. Become one guy. That's right. They're on fire. They got like nuclear yes. reaction ability. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Somehow, yes. <laughs> um, I got it. Uh, this thing called the Firestorm Matrix basically nuclearly fuses two people together into Firestorm. Uh, yeah, he's the nuclear man, so he can project energy. Uh, he can fly. He's got sort of like some pyrokinesis powers, but he also has an ability called transmutation um, where he can uh, he can basically um, take and a thing that's made of one thing and make it made of another. But he can't do it to organic things, yeah. but he could take like wood and make it cotton candy or you could take uh, lead and make it gold or, yeah. or whatever. He, he, that's that's a, a firestorm ability. That's something he can do. Um, Galactic Golem is this being um, that basically there's two different versions. One is that he's like a He's like a Daxamite kind of horror. And one, I think the earlier one, his first appearance, he's created by Lex Luthor. Um, but essentially the Galactic Golem can channel the sort of powers of like hyperstellar energy. Like not the same way that like Starman's staff works, where it's like drawing power from the cosmos. But there's just this particular type of energy that is in this one part of the cosmos. So if he doesn't continually feed on it, he gets weak and then dies. Um, but he has these sort of like markings on him that sort of represent different like types of suns or different types of energies or things like that. But he's basically this giant kind of Galactus style, like, like isn't that shaped like a human, but moves through space. Yeah. <laughs> um, a, a golem basically, uh, but it's sort of mindless. It's just about consuming energy. It goes for whatever the highest concentration of that hyperstellar energy is. So in, I think in the first adventure, Lex Luthor like fired a cannon that made Superman like super energetic that way. So the golem would go after him mm. kind of thing. Um, I think because Firestorm is an energy being. Yeah. The golem might go after him. Yes, I know it's maybe not precisely that hyperstellar thing, but I think, I think the golem would sense that there's something to consume there because part of his like what he does is the consumption. I think that's dangerous for Firestorm. Could Firestorm though um, manipulate the energy? 
I I think he can because I think there's some stories where like Firestorm is able to like replicate red sun energy or or like I think he can change yeah. it. So he might be able to starve out the golem, but he'd have to fight him until he ran out of energy, right? Like yeah. until the golem. Could he, or could he sort of change his energy into something else, like materialize him and make him into like stone or something like that, and he can't move? Well, I guess I, I think it probably he's. It's whether or not he's actually alive, right? Because yeah. Firestorm can't do that to organics. Mm-hmm. But because he's sort of an energy being and he's like a golem is not necessarily a lot. It's a thing no. like kind of given life, yes. but sort of artificial. Maybe he could. Yeah. But he, you'd bet he, he would have to because like the golem is stronger than Superman just to begin with until it weakens from not having that energy. Totally, so yeah. uh, if he couldn't do that, that would be an issue. Yeah. But the golem can also like fire energy, has some energy projection stuff that Firestorm could turn around on him. Totally. Um, so you're saying Firestorm? Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. Galactic Golem's not like a heavy hitter no, character. No, not at all. I think it would be weird to give it to him. For but sure. I, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think that's Firestorm. All right. All right. Is this, is this the last? I'm not sure. Let's find out. I think it is. <gasps> What's our final matchup? Final matchup. Oh, my God. Who is it? It is the first one. Brainiac 5. Oh, shit. Legion of Superheroes. Brainiac 5. Versus Martian Manhunter. This is a good fight. This is a damn good fight. Brainiac 5. Member of the Legion of Superheroes from the 31st century. Descendant of the villain Brainiac. Yeah. He is Kaluan. He's a 12th level intellect. He's a master inventor. He created the uh, Legion flight rings. And also he has a force field belt yep. um, that he uses to protect himself. But he is one of the most intelligent characters ever. Yep. Martian Manhunter. Basically, you know, we, we know who he is. His power levels are basically like that of Superman. But he also has telepathy uh telekinesis uh phasing um he's got all of these sort of like shape-shifting all these other powers as well um what do you what do you think what are your thoughts on this one this is a kind of a crazy a crazy matchup i i, I kind of go martian manhunter <clears throat> okay just because i mean a lot of the same abilities as superman but a little bit more powerful right it's hard to compete with that. Yeah. I wonder if, if like, I, I'm Martian Manhunter is an extremely powerful telepath, but I wonder if the limit of that is someone as intelligent as Brainiac 5. Mm-hmm. If he can see through any illusion Martian Manhunter would, pl- like, place him in, right? Because he's just yeah. so intelligent. And Martian Manhunter couldn't think of every single detail. Get it all. You know, it's the Inception thing, right? Yeah. It's like, Oh, this desk doesn't look like this, or you know what I mean, like that sort of thing. Yeah, I wonder if that's uh, if that would sort of nullify that power. I don't know that Martian Manhunter could get at him through the force field. Get at him, <laughs> up and at them. And ultimately, Martian Manhunter's major weakness is fire, which is easy fire. to create, and that's a that would be a thing known to Brainiac Five. He's too smart not to. Yeah. Find a way to incorporate fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I think I'm giving it to Brainiac 5. I don't think Martian Manhunter can get at him through the force field faster than Brainiac 5 can incapacitate him with fire. I think I'm giving it to Brainiac 5. Yeah. I, I've, I'm still going Martian Manhunter. You're all Martian yeah. Manhunter. I think that's fair. I mean, he's one of the most powerful characters yeah. in DC. That's not an unreasonable uh, stance to take. I like that one, though. Yeah. Nice. What a good one to end on. Well, you know what that means. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Are you just going to say Jessica? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So now it's time for Dial Doc. Yep. This is the time every week where we have to come up with a randomly generated character of our own, uh, hint- hinting back to the, the days of old when there was a Dial H for Hero comic where uh, readers would send in their own ideas for comics. Now, those weren't enough to create whole stories on their own, but there was enough to make a one-off sort of uh, idea for a character. What they would do is a, uh, a character would come up, dial hero or evil into a payphone and get torn torn 
into it would get so torn and get torn into get uh, torn? Uh, 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 a temporary hero yeah. or villain That's so right. we try to do our own every week do you have one you're also looking around for the record you're just doing it more subtly than i do it uh yes uh i have one okay uh character's name is keeper okay uh and he has the uh as in my sister's Oh, my sister's keeper. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, this it's beautiful. Movie. This character has the ability to produce keys that will uh, enter any doorway. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> chastity belts. Yeah. You know. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, and can get in and out of and lock any door. Right. I I like that. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Keeper. Uh, right. Mine is called Sand Doll. Okay. Uh, not because of... Sand Dolls. <laughs> 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 so what the Sand Doll can do is... Uh, b- basically, they're like a very diminutive yeah. person. Like doll-sized. Yeah. But they they have like Sandman powers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they... Yeah, can basically... Are you just saying they have superhero, the same superhero powers as one character, but they're tiny? Yeah. <laughs> really just going for gold here. <laughs> Is this like little kiss? Is that like... It's just kiss, but like little people? <laughs> You're really batting a thousand here, Doc. You're saying you didn't like it? <laughs> I'm just saying, of your of your uh, uh, um, and never ending intellect, this may have may have, you know, been a little. You know what? Jessica apparently has her own dial dog. Okay. Um, I've been text even though she's sitting in the room here. Uh, her character's name is Booty Call. Okay. They can control people's butts in public, <laughs> which includes their bowels. So they can just control the, like the muscles, like make them clench until they can't take it anymore. Make them hold their shit in. Make well, them shit uncontrollably. You can call them over to you and like force oh right, because then it's moving like the legs. Right. You, oh, I see. So you get control of. I think she dug you out of that hole. <laughs> but sand doll. No, no, no. I get it. Okay. Yeah, like like Sandman, but small. Yeah, like a doll. Yeah. Like Same abilities, yeah, but just small. A Sandman, yeah, a doll, but small. Sand doll. No, no, I, I, I get where I you feel like we're not on the same page. No, 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 I get it. It just. Do they also own a resort? Sandals. <laughs> I have to tell you a joke that me and a different friend came up with, which was to make like a a sort of like new metal themed resort, but you could only book on non consecutive days, so that you would have to cut your trip into pieces. This is your last <laughs> resort. <laughs> <laughs> Cut my trip into pieces. This is my last resort. Shout out to uh, Margaritas. <laughs> shout out to Katie and Alicia. You know who you are. That's one of my favorite things that we've come up with. That's yeah. really funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, if you think you can somehow do better than Sandal, uh, send in Good your fucking th- luck. I mean, yeah, but you're never going to be able to beat. <laughs> Booty call, booty call. <laughs> it's that's that's the true sh- uh, uh, shark that has but been. This jumped. is how Sandal wins. Sandal could just not form an ass. Ah, uh? then booty call is up. Shit's creek. <laughs> <laughs> but on t- somehow, if you could possibly think that you, we've been getting a, a ton of really good dial docs yeah, lately, yeah, especially from uh, uh, the the man who needs my rod the most. <laughs> yeah, that Cosmic, Cosmic Rod. Cosmic rod. Um, uh, use the hashtag dial doc and send us your idea for a hero, a villain, or somewhere in between. Or you can just send us a question, because this is Fanagar. It's That's all right. about you. Yeah. The next week's next, episode. W- next week is our annual it's That's our big right. like celebration. Holy shit! It's our second annual. Oh we've we've God. been doing this for two years, and I'm starting to get in that two year itch. That's what it is. That's when it is, right? What do you mean? <laughs> I've never strayed. I've been spending a lot of time with another podcast. I've, yeah, I've been guesting on a lot of. Them. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, last year we asked for like personal questions about his name. Is this us? Is <gasps> well, I knew that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Last year, we asked for personal questions about us for the annual. Yes. This year, we thought we would mix it up a little bit. They don't have to necessarily be personal, but they can, or they can be questions about comics or about us for the podcast, but uh, ask them to our wives uh, who will be joining us to talk about how much they loathe that we spend this much time on this show. That's right. Um, yeah. And we'll be there to cry. Yeah. And hold each other. Yes. Wow. I need some love like I never needed love before. I want to make love to you, baby. <laughs> never need love. Now I'm back for more. <laughs> Cut my trip into pieces. <laughs> this is your last resort. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or you can nerd out with us online. It's just about general nerdy yes, fun please. stuff. Yeah. Uh, every week, all you have to do is reach out to us various social media platforms, such as our Facebook. Dr. DC Podcast. Oh, our Twitter. At Dr. DC. Instagram. Dr. DC Podcast. R- email. Dr. DC Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Reddit r slash doctor underscore dc and of course the doc phone is now open that's right all you have to do is give us a phone call and leave a voicemail at 208 917 3238 dceu and of course not only can you talk to us online not only can you leave us voicemails not only can you nerd out with us about dc but you can also go on our website and read our dc specific articles buy our merch buy our merch all I have to do is go to www.drdcpodcast.com or .ca. That's right. And don't forget our Patreon, patreon.com slash drdc. It's only $5 a month. You get a full bonus episode every week. We've got some crazy shit on there. Uh, some stuff about comics, some stuff not about comics, uh, some stuff very engaging and informative, some stuff fucking lunacy. Yes. And uh, more of that than anything else. And it's all exclusive to our Patreon. That's so, right. Yeah. Uh, and f- I mean, iTunes is about to go down, but you know what? Uh, leave us a but review. We won't go down without a fight. <laughs> That's right. Let's get to a thousand reviews before <laughs> tomorrow. A thousand reviews, and I'll shave my balls. <laughs> Again. <laughs> You'll shave your head. Live on air. No video, just audio. Well, we've got 30 reviews now. So the next so we've got to now book in our art episode. That's right. Yeah. So, we, uh, we will be doing a video episode and we'll be talking about artwork, which true. is super dope. I'm actually very excited. It's about gonna be that very, one, very yeah. fun. I mean I need to order some equipment for that. Yeah. Um we gotta get that sex wing out of here. Uh, I thought that that's where the camera's gonna go. <laughs> The camera's just moving the whole time. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, that's it for this week. We'll talk to you. Oh, if you're a Patreon subscriber, we will talk to you on Friday. That's right. If not, see you next week. Same doc time, same doc channel. Uh, judges. Adios. This was a Brain Freeze podcast.